The anticipation is thick. Tiger Woods, Francesco Molinari, and Brooks Kepka in our featured group getting set to start the PGA Championship. Exclusive coverage coming your way next. How did we get here? Not to this course, or this field, or this championship. How did we get to a place that feels so familiar and so foreign at the same time? There's a little of that old tiger magic. Waited for years. Many doubted we'd ever see it. The return to glory. It's been great for golf. It's been great for him. He's exceeded a lot of people's expectations. To go against the best players in the world and take him down, that's a hell of a comeback. It's a story of redemption complete with a Hollywood ending. But this isn't the epilogue, only the next chapter. Do you believe you'll get 18 majors? No. You've accepted that? I've accepted I'm going to get more. As the adulation subsides, focus shifts. We all know he can win, but there's a lot of guys out here that are going to try and keep him from winning. A generation inspired by greatness has been reminded of its potential. They've come to this course not to witness history in the making, but to write their own. Kepka, there's your champion. <laughs> Your name is on that Wanamaker trophy forever. It's possible to appreciate the past without fixating on it. Moving forward is the only thing that can stop us from running it back. Welcome to the big time. It's the 101st PGA Championship from Beth Page Black. PGA.com, in association with the PGA of America, inspiring the future of the sport and the golfer in all of us, present the 101st PGA Championship from Beth Page Black in Farmingdale, New York. Golf for the people at a public facility. Third time hosting a major championship, first time hosting the PGA Championship. And the sun has come out for the first time of the week, it seems, on Thursday morning. A glorious day to start off this major championship. Temperatures already up into the mid-50s, and we are thrilled to see it. The sun is out, and it's not raining. Alongside the Carolina Section Player of the Year, Steve Scott. I'm Brian Katrick. Glad to have you along with us, and we are excited to see all four major championship trophies in the same featured group. A lot of bad blood between these guys, and here we go. It's going to be a special day here, Brian, at Beth Page Black. Uh, we have we have the, uh, the the greatest players on the planet, and we are going to watch them uh, live today. And uh, you know, if the Masters was a great opening act to the major championship season, well, the PGA Championship uh, is a uh, is the main course today, and we have uh, we have three combatants ready to. Uh, to go uh, alongside the rest of them. You're a former member of the Met section. You know all about this course as we watch Tiger. We're going to talk about the setting because that's as much a part of the story as anything. But these three guys with those four trophies and the win that this man had just a month ago has just all culminated in this moment right here Thursday morning. You go back a couple of majors. Brooks beat everybody out on Long Island a little east of here out at Shinnecock Hills. But then at Carnoustie at the Open Championship, it was Molinari taking it from Tiger. Brooks holding off Tiger at this tournament in August. And then Tiger taking it from Francesco and Brooks finishing second at the Masters. These guys have beaten up on each other and they're getting ready to do it again. They've, uh, they've tackled each other. They've handed each other uh, tr trophies and uh, with, with Molinari and, and Kepka with uh, dumping it in the water at the Masters. and. And uh, Tiger doing his thing. Uh, Tiger's done Tiger things his whole life, and we're going to see it again today. Meeting some of the honorary observers and meeting Francesco Molinari, the champion golfer of the year. What a turnaround in his career the last year and a half. He has gone from maybe not even the best player in his family 
with older brother Eduardo, a former U.S. amateur champion, to one of the best on the planet and an unstoppable force in majors. He sure is. I mean, being uh, being ranked seventh in the world right now, all three of these players in the top seven in the world. Kepka at three, Tiger at six. We've uh, we've got some we've got some great golf ahead of us here. Uh, and Molinari said a little bit of a disadvantage on this golf course, though. And we're going to talk about this as we go through. The narrative has been distance off the tee. And uh, Molinari is, he averages 10 miles an hour slower with his club head speed than does Brooks Kepka. And Tiger falls kind of right in the middle of that. So uh, it would be very interesting to see what kind of clubs he has into the greens and, and uh, how the distance will really prevail today. Especially here on the 10th. Let's take a closer look at this starting hole. Half the field has got to make the van ride over here. You've played this course many times. Take us through 10. Uh, this 500, well, 489 yard par four today. It's some um, 230 yards just to reach the fairway. Very narrow strip, but it's going to be bombs away. It's very straight away. Uh, bunkers will come into play a little bit, but the key is getting this ball in the fairway. Get an iron to the green. The front, these front bunkers are very deep. You cannot see the green from the front of those, from in those front bunkers. And going long is no bargain either. Six foot drop behind that green. Uh, getting this ball in the fairway, hitting it high and soft with some spin to start is going to be important. So far this morning, just one birdie on the card. There have been three doubles, and Thomas Peters had a triple after hitting the ball in a fairway bunker on the right, then over into the long stuff on the left, took a hack at it, couldn't advance it, had to take an unplayable lie. The rough is long. What's very important for the viewers to know at home is that these players haven't hit a ball in some 35 or 40 minutes. Uh, there's a quite a bit of a shuttle ride from the practice area out to this 10th tee at the farthest uh, point of the golf course, uh, really the most northern point of the golf course. So, you know, these players are trying to re-loosen up. The, you may have seen them uh, momentarily watching the group ahead of them play. That That's very rare in major championship golf. Most of the time they're on the practice screen and then they they come over, but uh, they were there watching the group ahead of them. So it's been a while, uh, and with a, with cool temperatures today, uh, stiff backs can maybe come into play a little bit, especially for somebody who maybe has had a fusion in their back. The whole world was jealous of you getting to watch that warm up. Brooks Kepka always looks like he is warmed up. He is the defending champion trying to do what only two others have done and that has become the two time defending champion at two different major championships at the same time. And these players had some different warm ups out there. Brooks Kepka was the only player of the three who did not use a track man out on the range. Uh, we saw Tiger varying uh, heights of his tee uh, teeing the ball lower kind of more of a fairway finder shot and then but the the, the big thing is you know, getting this ball big time in the air. There's not going to be a lot of roll out here today. Conditions are very soft, so you're going to see the ball. Uh, a lot of carry, not a lot of roll. Never know it by the way Brooks carries himself, but that is one of the best players in the world. He's been world number one. He has slid to number two, and the scene is set on the 10th tee. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 101st PGA Championship. This is the 824 starting time. Now on the tee, please welcome the 2018 PGA Champion of West Palm Beach, Florida, Brooks Kepka. He is across the interstate and the turnpike from PGA of America headquarters, and he has their greatest trophy. Let's take a look at Top Tracer, presented by Michelob Ultra. A good start.
was and great next to, to play from Italy, Francesco Molinari. Well, he's done everything but win this. And all the focus on length. If there's another way to get around here, you got to figure this man will figure it out. Trouble. And next to play, 1999, 2000, 2006, and 2007 PGA champion from Hope Sound, Florida, Tiger Woods. You were one of these great New York sports fans for a number of years, Steve, and uh, a lot of them have come out just about as far away from the clubhouse as you can get to see this group get underway. He is an absolute rock star, and he has a rock star following. First tee shot has been troublesome for Tiger in the past. He may have gotten away with this one. Brooks is in the middle. Tiger has missed the fairway, and how about this? Even with the 11th hole over there, Francesco is reloading and hitting a provisional. Like I said, these players haven't hit a shot in about 40 minutes, so backs can get tightened up. You, you kind of throws you out of your rhythm. This is not a normal start for a major championship, having that much time between the practice area and the first tee. So well within his rights to play a provisional ball here. We mentioned that Thomas Peters drove it right and then wound up from the long rough, played it, it got tugged left and he had to take an unplayable. So Francesco knows how long that grass is over there. And he's worried that he might not even be able to find it. So an inauspicious start for the champion golfer of the year. Featured group coverage underway live on PGA.com. Round number one from Beth Page Black underway with nine players leading the way at one under. Francesco Molinari has found his tee shot at 10. In between some fairway bunkers over there. And possibly in the fairway. Sitting bunker. in one, yes. <laughs> it was so bad even the laser operator didn't know where it was, but. Considering that he hit a provisional, Steve, that's not bad. I think that was a smart play for him to actually play that provisional. Got him, you know, maybe a little, just a touch more loose, playing another shot. But if you don't get it in the fairway here, this hole is essentially a par five. How about Tiger laying up from 201? Not even trying it. Indication of how difficult this shot is. His front bunkers are no bargain. Very smart play, very flat lie in the fairway. He'll have a wedge in from there. Now Brooks from 191. Playing quickly as he always does from the left center of the fairway here. Good angle to this front right hole location. And that is a false back. That ball's gonna hang in there, so. Kepka can't hit the green either. But at least we found all three of them. A little bit of a rough start on a tough hole. No matter where you are, you can watch live video, get live leaderboards, and the latest news. Follow the action with our official PGA Championship apps for Android, iPhone, and Roku. Steve, I was speaking with one of our colleagues, Hall of Famer, Sir Nick Faldo, yesterday, and he said with this start for these three guys, these three opening holes, 4-4-4 four, four, four would be fantastic. He said, I wouldn't even mind making two fours and a five during that stretch. You know this course. Well, I think uh, I think he was spot on with that. I mean, the 10th the hole and the 12th hole, this is a very difficult start. Uh, the, the holes are nearly 500 yards, if not over that. 
uh, tremendous uh, tee shots required just to just to have a, a middle sort of iron into the green for the longer hitter. So uh, it's it's a challenging start to say the least. But you know, hopefully for these these players, this will be the last time they have to do this this week. Every every other time they'll be starting off the first hole more of a normal flow to the round. But this tenth hole is way out there. It's a it's a difficult start. We used to play here in the and still do in the New York State Open. And I've started on this same hole, and it's a uh, it, it, it's daunting to say the least. Temperature cool. Tiger in the short sleeves. So much was made about the fact that he's only played nine holes here this week. Was going to have a practice session out on the golf course, but did not come here yesterday. And the health concerns were immediately what the chorus was singing. He looks healthy. Francesco working it out. A wedge for his third. Very flat line. These fairways are immaculate here, so should be able to put a nice, nice amount of action on this one. Lots of rain every single day here at Bethpage State Park. The greens as receptive as you'll see on a Thursday morning. That left for par. Now Tiger. And how many times do you see Tiger lay up after hitting it in the rough from just 200 yards? So gives you an indication of what's going on around this putting surface. But again, the lies in these fairways very flat. So it's almost like hitting a, a practice ball on the range for them. Sliding it lower. And still too much. Got himself stuck in between and Tigers over the back in three. This came out low. Tiger didn't like it from the start. Well, there's an expanse of trees behind this 10th green that maybe a, uh, he, he thought that there'd be a little bit more wind than there was, but as you could see a flag in the background in that replay that was actually blowing from the ninth green. So didn't didn't judge that wind as well as he uh, would have liked there and inauspicious start to say the least. We're talking about a shot of about 110 yards and you can see there he missed it by a good 20. So yes, inauspicious. Indeed, J.J. Spawn, Sam Burns, Keith Mitchell, Mike Lorenzo Vera, Eric Van Ruyen, Jimmy Walker, former PGA champion, Ches Reavy, Hao Tong Lee, and Sean Norris are the nine players that are all leading. Only one of them started on the back nine. That was Eric Van Ruyen. Everybody else started on number one. And Troy Merritt has just made the, made the party ten full players. I think you'll find that as a common theme throughout this championship. That, you know, the first couple holes, you'd much rather start there. It's a little bit more gentle of a start off one and two, two being a the only four, uh, only par four under 400 yards on the property. So Tiger's going to have a couple options here. This closely mown area behind the 10th green. Looks like he's got a lofted club in his hand. Not not too far. The ball didn't travel all the way down towards the bottom of the collection area. So. But as a player, this puts you on edge early. Yeah, not a guaranteed five. He hasn't hit the green in. In even three, so. The Tigers fourth. You have to remember he has not played a tournament round since that final shot that we saw him at the master. So tournament golf is very different than just being home and playing at the medalist where he plays. And that's very important I think Steve that left for bogey now for Tiger. He certainly knows how to win. He knows how to win majors. What did you think of the decision to skip Quail Hollow. Well he's obviously being extra cautious this whole year is a, is a learning experience not only for him in, in the schedule and the cadence of the year with the with the PGA being in May but 
you know, with his back and the uncertainties of how much he can play. But playing it cautious can't hurt. Uh, I, I like it that way as opposed to the other way. Now Brooks, by far the best position of anyone in the group. A fourth place finish a week ago. From off the green, long range, the defending champion says, remember me? His body language says it all. The way he sauntered up to pick that ball out of the cup, it's like, yeah, I'm Brooks Kepka and I'm here to play. Yeah, business as usual for this man, whether you notice or not. And there was talk of the chip on his shoulder well before there was a chip on his shoulder, but I think there's one now. Molinari, this to save par, and he has been unflappable from this distance in big moments in the last two years. 5-0 and oh at the Ryder Cup. It seemed like the bigger the putt was, the more likely it was to go in, but he's going to drop a shot. Which, after playing a provisional ball, not the worst score anybody's going to make here on number 10. Uh, damage control there, and, and Tiger in the same mode. Can he somehow scratch out a five? A tee shot that it looked like he liked. He knew he didn't want to mess around with short. Winds up going long in three. You get the sense he probably could have been long in two. And as a competitor, these type of putts put you on edge early. The only good thing he has going for him here is these greens at Beth Page Black have very little break. So all these putts within five feet are usually going to be played inside the hole. He uses the line from about this range and he will use the line on the ball here. Ouch. Missed the fairway by a step and that's a six. Not how he wanted to start the week. This, on the other hand, is how Brooks Kepka wanted to start the week. Would rather have hit the green, but hey, if you're going to miss it, leave the flag stick in and toss the ball in. Brooks Kepka birdies the first. Ho hum. The defending champion is at it again. He's tied for the lead as they head over to the 11th. Golf tracks taking us through it. Yeah, in this 11th hole, the players cannot see the fairway from the tee. They're going to have to pick out a, a target, and there's a, there's a tent you actually see in this graphic. They're going to pick the left edge of that. They can elect to take driver and blast it over that bunker. And this green is one of the more steeper pitches on the golf course here. Players are going to want to keep this ball below the hole. Hole located, as you see, back left today. Good birdie opportunity. This is one of the shorter par fours at 444 yards. Flag doesn't even look like it's on the green back there. It will look like it's the size of a bucket to Brooks Kepka, who has steadily risen through the world golf rankings. We mentioned up to number one in the world. He and Justin Rose were trading that spot at the end of the calendar year. And he looks the part right now. And that bunker carry he's looking to make is no issue for him at all. That ball's carrying some 310 yards. I hate coming. The perfect angle to that back left location. Big time player for big time events. Now Francesco, who is very nearly on this 11th hole already once. Remain 63rd in total driving on the PGA Tour. This club is going to have to come into play and come into play in a big way this week. That's a little more like it. 
He just looks unflappable. That first swing came out of nowhere. Now he's a little bit more loose now. He's hit three tee shots. <laughs> Good thinking. Well, a bit of a mess at the 10th for Tiger. Maybe a strategic error, which is unusual. Certainly some execution errors and two over through one. Not, not trying to do too much here. Just the fairway wood, and he's going to roll up the sleeves and get to work. Tiger trying to dig out of a hole. Brooks right up into the lead on one of the toughest holes in the course. We're seeing a little bit of everything on Thursday morning. Back with you here in the opening round. PGA Championship on PGA.com. Featured group coverage. We're going to watch all four major championship trophies. Thirteen players are leading this tournament at one under. Brooks Kepka's one of them. Tiger, three back after one hole. Has 170 left for his approach to 11. It should be just a nice, comfortable eight iron. Watched him on the range earlier, practicing high draws, so should fit this whole location well. Much better than the first. Not what he was looking for, but it's acceptable. A little bit more normal there. Golf track showing us the nearly 300 yard tee shot of Francesco Molinari and the room for the Walmart they could build out here between those two. Francesco with 150 even. From a very flat lie, a lot of flat lies in these fairways at Beth Page Black. An excellent shot to this new, newly uh, expanded green area. As you see the change of grass in the back left of this green there. They've added some 200 square feet to this green. Pretty much just to set up this whole location. Now here's Brooks, the leader, 138. Oh, my goodness. The runner up at the Masters after holding off Tiger. There was a time, Steve, when these guys were intimidated and we saw it in their play whether they would admit it it doesn't matter if Brooks admits it that guy looks like he belongs he looks like a cocky shortstop to me just he just he knows he's good and he's he's been vocal about it uh has been uh, been noted in a lot of media outlets but you just I like body language and his body language says I'm absolutely ready, and his, his shots are, uh, are showing exactly what his body language is telling us. Big sports fan as well. Had a chance to hang out and talk baseball with David Wright, who's going to join us later on today. He's the official ambassador of this PGA Championship, and of course, Joe LaCava, a big New York sports fan. So they're probably, what do you think they're talking about, the Knicks? Yeah, you know. where, where the Knicks fell in the recent lottery that they had the other night, but I don't think Brooks is a hockey fan, so I don't think that's the conversation. It is baseball season. Yeah, Brooks said if he wasn't a professional golfer, baseball would have been his thing. You can see that he just he has that build. He has that swagger. You know, it's noted that he hangs out with Dustin Johnson a lot, so Maybe a little bit of DJ is rubbed off on Brooks as well over the years. So you got to like the way uh, the way he goes about his business. And he won his very first PGA Tour event did Brooks at the Waste Management Open in Phoenix back in 2015. And as anybody knows that's one of the biggest circuses on the PGA Tour. So. And whenever you're paired with Tiger, you know you're going to be in a, a bit of a circus, especially 
in this New York market. Tiger will be first. They dig out of the hole here from outside 40 feet. And what I'm very inter interested to see over the course of this round, a Tiger notoriously plays conservatively in the first round and, and builds a crescendo all the way to the fourth round with his, with his strategies. So you're going to see him play pretty cautious. And uh, I think we just saw that in this. So uh, as we traverse this opening nine, let's uh, we'll watch his the lines that he decides to take and how tight he decides to fire at the pins. This will be uphill breaking from his right here. Well, just about got one back from long range there. Pretty good look. The green surfaces here by major championship standards have been described as flat. You know, obviously they're not perfectly flat, but the thought is that the mediocre putters actually don't lose as much ground to the great putters this week. Your thoughts? Totally agree with that. This is going to be more of a, a ball striking contest from tee to green. Not a lot of break in a lot of these putts. And, uh, you know, we've already seen a long, long range one made. So, uh, you know, going to be exciting when it gets on the greens. We are going to see some action. We are going to see a lot of putts being holed this week. The greens are absolutely perfect, smooth as glass. Francesco got a read, but he's also going to give one. Trying to get back to even par. He just blew it through whatever there was. He's outside a tiger now. Crushed it. I never find it easy putting through a, a newly sodded area. Now, granted, it's still perfect, but they just don't quite seem to settle in. And for a couple years, when a when a green is a is expanded or recontoured. So seen a couple putts kind of been overplayed. So this is kind of a, a new putt for the players. They haven't quite seen this in competition yet, but and for Kepka here, always nice to see a few putts on the same line when you've got a birdie look from inside 10 feet. You know, what a dream start here for Brooks. Just incomplete control and a chance to take the lead alone. Hawkeye technology showing us right edge will work here. Pulled it. He pulled it. Ouch. Sometimes when you decel, the, the putter blade just outraces the hands that much, and it doesn't take much to make or miss a putt. Well, he's still tied for the lead, but that would have been a heck of a statement, especially as tough as these opening three holes are. Chesco for damage control. Just fine. Stays one over. Of his five Ryder Cup points. This past fall, four of them came against this man. Tiger just couldn't get away from him. Francesco's, Francesco's handled the stage with Tiger very well over his time being paired with him. And no problems there for Tiger. Doesn't get anything back. No birdies at the 11th for our featured group. And they head over to 12, and there have, there's been a lot of talk about this hole over the years. This 12th hole, as you see, the, the fairway sweep around that left fairway bunker there. The shorter hitters are actually going to have to play out to the right of that bunker and have some 230 to 50 yards into this par four. The bigger hitter has a huge advantage on this hole. 283 yards to clear that 
bunker. Then they're going to have a, a mid to long iron into a, a flattish green. You've got a, a small tier on the back. This hole is located 22 paces on and 12 from the right. Par here on 12, playing 502 yards. Great score. And Kerry Haig, the chief championships officer, seeing that wind that's straight into these guys, plus the softer conditions, has given them a break, Steve. They're playing a tee box up. They added that back tee, but not using it today. Well, oh, it's only 502 yards. It's a, yes. what, what a break, right? It's a 260 carry over everything down that left-hand side. you got to imagine that's where Brooks is going. For sure. He can, he can make mincemeat of this tee shot here and have a... Maybe a seven or eight iron into the green. And... Right about there will work. Kepka at a full sprint already. <coughs> and that big disadvantage that some of the shorter hitters would have. We just saw Francesco hit one almost 300 yards, so he's not short. But by comparison, this would be a tough decision for him. And with the tee up one, not as much. Although he's looking farther right than, Fran than Brooks was. Oh, it didn't quite get out. Took the same line as Brooks, and you see the advantage of, a, of, of 10 miles an hour more of clubhead speed right there, which is the difference between those two players. That's all he needed. Good call. Now Tiger. And Tiger's driving stats being tied for 13th in total driving on the tour this year. Marked improvement from what he's traditionally done. Would expect this in between those two, and that's where it started. It's not where it's going to finish. But there's room for it. A little bit of a hiccup for a couple of our featured group contestants, but Brooks Kepka right up there now, one shot off the lead. Chez Reevy starting over on the front nine where most of this first page of the leaderboard started, has gotten a two under par. Shane Lowry and Eric Van Ruyen starting on the back. Kelly Kraft and Charlie Hoffman also starting on the back among these guys that are at one under par. Brooks Kepka, perhaps you've heard of him. We watched his birdie from off the green at the 10th. He made the long one, missed the short one. And here we are now at 12. Tiger will be the first to play. He's going to have 228. Well, the flag is showing like it's 230. West Northwest is more than 21. Which is really where it should be. Green not clear, and Francesco has already laid up. So Tiger waiting on the group in front. Alex Noren, Xander Shoffley, and Hideki Matsuyama. Well, I was, my first hole was, was flat four iron, and then all the time. I don't think it gets on top. You got I mean, three, I don't mind if you got a saw at time. Seven is the very front. You got See the players trying to talk about wind from this 12th hole all the way through the 14th. These holes play all in the same direction. So you get a great beat on the wind here. It's certainly going to carry him through the next three holes, but 228 yards left for his second here This on this par four and a half, essentially. And you heard Joey help the decision to a four iron as opposed to a soft three and I've noticed you see the green just getting set to clear I've noticed 
over their relationship over the last few years. Unlike most caddies, Joe is the more aggressive one in the relationship. He almost always chooses the shorter club and the harder shot. He's just a matter of fact guy. It's just a straight up stock four iron. Keeping it below this hole will be important. He doesn't have to get this all the way back to the hole location. Love the demeanor of Joe LaCaba. And in this case, you know, you hear Tiger say get up a little. You know, might have needed that soft three. But it's the straight up. No, no funny business attitude from Joe that I think Tiger respects. Yeah, Joe knows under the hole is important. He was out walking this golf course yesterday morning at 7.30 on this back nine. Tiger did not show up yesterday for practice here. Brooks from 191. You see excellent distance control once again for Brooks Kepka. It's always a good sign that everything is in control with your judgment, decision making. 12 thirds. Francesco's decision was to lay it up out of that left rough. He had 210, didn't like it, and now he's got 110. Yeah, a lot of players say they're not even going to hit more than they can't hit any more than seven iron out of this rough. It's a mixture of poana and bluegrass, very thick. Depends on which part of the rough you get in, honestly, of how it sits up or sits down. And in the morning, uh, it, it's uh, it's it's a little wet and it's very thick. So. When A.W. Tillinghast designed this golf course, he did not design it with the fact that the players were going to start on the 10th hole. This is a, it's a very difficult stretch to initiate your major championship run on. And a miscalculation there. Some pressure on Molinari to save par from long range. I think that's just the prudent play. You just you're going to see that quite a bit this week. Certainly won't be the, the last time anybody lays up from the rough. You need some some tremendous club head speed to get through there. And again, when we see Tiger Woods and 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 Players like that laying up from 200 yards out of the rough, you know it's thick. The second annual Baja Mar Showdown heads to the Royal Blue Golf Course in the Bahamas, led by Aaron Rodgers and Chris Paul. Saturday, July 14th at 2 p.m., only on CBS. A fairly remote portion of the golf course for the spectators to get to also, although these guys are heading back toward the rest of the world. I guess out there 9T is pretty far out too. Out, out horse country of Farmingdale, New York. Beautiful part of the country. Right in the heart of Long Island. Actually passed through some horse stalls just to get to the set today from where our compound is. So we see Mother Nature and uh, all its glory out there. Well, it's a state park, as you know, having lived here and played here so many times. But there's a lot to do at Bethpage State Park. Five different golf courses, but you mentioned the equestrian events. Right also 
the back here where the horses are, there's a training facility for all the area fire departments. There's plenty of room to go hiking and picnic. There's an airport just off the east side of the property. And there's a lot of room between Tiger and this hole also, leaving the flag stick in for birdie. Singing the cup on 11 and again on 12. I think one of the benefits of keeping the flag stick in is the is the depth perception that you receive from that when you're outside of 40 feet. I, I think that's a great call or have the, the hole or the, have the flag stick attended. It's easier to putt to a bigger target than a small hole from that distance, I feel. Well, and I think it's been so much talked about the new rules changes for 2019. I think leaving the flag stick in has replaced having the flag stick tended for a lot of folks. I think that was range where Tiger would have had the flag stick tended. He still could, just chose not to. Molinari for his par. And another missed fairway is going to cost him another shot. And that was the anticipation coming into the week. Never really sure. This is the PGA of America setting this course up as opposed to the two previous majors here that were set up by the USGA. PGA Tour set up a couple of events as well. There have been a couple of PGA Tour playoff events here. Winning scores have been dramatically different under those two setups. We, don't, we weren't sure what we would get here this week. Now Kepka. So he will stay one back. Tiger won with a winning score of 277 in 02. It was 276 for the other US Open that Lucas Glover won. Nick Watney was only two shots better than that at the 2012 Barclays. And Patrick Reed was only one worse than Watney. So 275, 274. So the setups have been fairly similar except for that first year. You could make this golf course very soft and like it is, and it's still a brute. Of course, for the playoff event, it was a par 71 for the majors. It is a par 70. We'll get over to that hole later on, the one, the different one, which is number seven. Francesco takes care of business and makes the five, and there's Kepka, that putter, gaining on Tiger's putter. It's now one, three majors. And it's one off the lead here. So put that stretch behind you. Players get a little bit of breathing room for a couple of holes here before they go across the street. So they head back over to the 13th tee and we'll take a look at the hole on golf tracks. The 609 yard par five players are gonna to wanna to fire this ball down the right portion of the fairway as it serpentines all the way up to the green. Gonna be hard pressed to reach this green in two Really just want to get a, a great position past that fairway bunker into a nice flat layup spot. Green is somewhat obscured by that bunker sitting some 20 yards short of the green, but the green is very flat here. And uh, a, a big tee shot, they could get very close to the green and, and have an easy chip and a putt. I see a little bit of action coming up here on 13. You're seeing action. Well, the numbers on the 13th, five birdies already. About 24, 25 players have come through. Five birdies, five bogeys, 14 pars. And remember, there's only two par fives on this golf course, number four being the other one playing at about 515 yards. So 
This one's certainly lengthy in excess of 600. But certainly wouldn't put anything past a guy like Brooks Kepka to reach this green in two no matter what. You can't build a golf course long enough for these fine competitors anymore. to get over both of those bunkers over there. Almost. That will make his decision very easy on the second shot. Somebody put that pole in the way. There was a day. When just because Brooks hit it in there, Tiger would think he could still get it over, but I don't think that day is today. Hit it somewhere else. That Gorgeous, gorgeous <laughs> swing there. It's not the sound of Tiger's tee shot. That's one of the planes landing at the airport, just right behind the 10th green. And Francesco knew there would be moments like this, Steve. Those two monsters would be hitting bombs out there. He just got to stay within himself. He's 132nd on the tour in driving distance, so below average for sure, but he finds the short grass. Molinari dropping a couple of shots. Tiger may double at the first. Kepka's just one back as the defending champion. Back with you here in the opening round of the PGA Championship. Let's take a look at this move from Brooks Kepka. And as we take it to the top there, you'll, the biggest thing I notice when I watch Brooks Kepka is that bowed left wrist, very similar to a John Rahm or Dustin Johnson. It's very much a power move. From this position right here, he can do what they, all the teachers say, turn and burn. Dustin. And fire it, and, and when he, if he uses a little too much hands from that position though, being that the club face is a little bit closed, occasionally you get that left shot, and that's exactly what happened. Dustin has a very similar position as you mentioned. Here's Kepka now. Now he has stepped out of the fairway bunker. Francesco ready to go. Not an easy layup by any means here down 13. 325 all the way to the hole. So, trying to put it in position of fairway with some contours to it. He'll throw it over there. Try it from that spot. That's well positioned down the left. Tiger with a long iron now. Also trying to position this ball for an exacting third. Double bogey at the first, trying to dig out. Kepka's down in there. There he is. That's how deep these fairway bunkers are. Kepka about 6'3. You know, barely see his hat, but he's laid well back. Really no other choice from these fairway bunkers. You have to take your medicine a little bit. The ball collects all down towards the middle in the fairway bunkers and the greenside bunkers. They, as they rake them, they're all very smooth on the outer edges. And 
They'd be a little more rough in the middle, not maybe the cleanest lies that they would like at the bottom, however. That Australian style of raking with the smooth edges and then the roughed up sand at the bottom. Great birdie opportunity here at 13, but it's going to be done with the wedges for our featured group here on Thursday morning. Temperature warming up. We may actually get into the 70s the next couple of days after a chilly start to this day. My partner on the radio, John McGinnis, has been very entertained to point out that with the U.S. Open at Pebble Beach next month and the Open Championship coming up in Ireland, temperatures in Augusta, I don't know that we touched 80 at all during the week. The Irish event might be the warmest of the four majors this year. <laughs> that would be... <laughs> Irony right there. That would uh, be very interesting. But yeah, th this move to May by the PGA of America, I, I think it sets the whole scene for the major championship schedule and the professional game in general. And, and, and even as far as the, the PGA professional at his home club, uh, they, they can put out all of their initiatives this time of year. And, you know, this is kind of the start of the golf season up north, as we're seeing. And the, the leaves are almost coming through on all of the trees now. And, you know, junior golf is starting. And so this move to May for the PGA of America, I think, is just an overall home run. Yeah, that makes more sense. All the programs, as you said, that you're about to run, as opposed to the event in August. And here's all the programs that you now have to wait a few months for a whole lot of the country. PGA Tour season will end a little earlier, but of course you get this man winning the last major championship before this one. All the momentum in the world really setting up for this grouping with all four major championship trophies. It all makes perfect sense. It, it, it puts the PGA Championship squarely in the narrative this year. Behind it. Ricky Elliott giving his man the number, 133. Right at it. Right at it. Right at it. Nice aggressive line there for Brooks Kepka. Even the bad shots don't seem all that bad. And that was a good one right there. It was a little iffy with that rough right on the toe of his club there. Couldn't have been any more than a wedge for Kepka. But it turned out all right. And that was the difference between being in the fairway and being in that first cut of rough. I think you would see a, a much different result, but was able to control that ball very well. Molinari with 93. And this is well positioned in the left side of the fairway. Got a pretty clean look at this back right hole location. Acceptable. Could have done better. Great wedge player. And so is this man from 87 yards. Perfect little lob wedge for him. Just control the spin. He uses one of the spinniest golf balls on tour. But hard to spin it back from the rough, though. In a second time in just a few short holes here, the Tiger has missed long with a wedge. I think that's the difference between playing casual golf and playing tournament golf. Adrenaline is one of those things that it's hard to factor for and uh, although he's played a lot of tournament golf it's not in his recent memory but a guy like Brooks Kepka played last week in Dallas played very well he's got those tournament adrenaline feelings he knows he's got a really good sense of how far this ball is going it's very interesting because Tiger was using track man on the range this morning just trying to judge the distances and figure out what he's doing and we've seen him misjudge few times very poorly really in the in the first four holes so he had 85 yards for his third at 10 and hit it over the green wound up making double he just had 87 yards so essentially the same shot and he hit it just as far uh, it's certainly a, a a different miscue from tiger 
there's and the pitch mark. So you see he didn't miss. You know didn't miss the target by more than about 10 steps. However. This is awful back here. And you had to expect that ball to bounce. And it feels even worse because this is a hole where you know, when you do have a wedge like that. You feel doubly is worse because you know you should have a birdie putt and now you're going to struggle to make a par depending on how this lie is situated. Well that camera is pretty close to it. We can't see it. This camera is way above it and we can't see it. <laughs> you can see his I mean, shoes. Most of his shoes. This is just thick. Still don't see it. Been sitting better than we we could see but defense out of Tiger on a hole that he was hoping to make one up. His line was perfect but his distance has just been a little little off but a, a, a player of his caliber arguably the greatest player to ever live he will figure out his distances pretty quickly I would imagine. So I mean you take us through that as as Francesco lines his up. It's an 87 yard shot. You saw the pitch mark was all the way on the back of the green. There were eight steps behind it. He flew it six and a half steps past his number. If he'd have flown it four steps past his number, would it have bitten? Maybe that wasn't that bad of a miss. Am I making this stuff up? Professional players live and die in four yard increments, Brian, and I, I think that's what happened there. But here's Molinari, who was cautious under the hole. This for birdie. Get the hole. He's going to have to be really sharp with his wedges and his putter this week. If he wants to be in the mix come Sunday. Tough stretch of the course to start. Those two bogeys not really earth shattering. But you put those on top of a five here and it starts to feel a little worse. Kepka, another good look. So swing off of his right to left. A cup or two out on the right. And another near miss. One of the caddies driving me around earlier this week told me, gave me the thought of there's no, no break here at Beth Page. He called it no break Beth Page. So. You may see some players overread the brakes a little bit and singe that top part of the hole. This is for par. So a six to start. All pars since then. They head to their first par three. The lead up to two under par. Charlie Hoffman, J.B. Holmes, and Matt Wallace now joining the group. Charlie and J.B. just joining the group with a birdie over at the fourth. Did you see the European Tour's latest video with Matt Wallace getting punked by Eddie Pepperell? <laughs> I can imagine. I, I, I missed that one, but they're pretty funny over there in, uh, on the European Tour. I mean, I, I like the Mollywood one with Molinari and Wet and, uh, and Fleetwood in the bed. He's sleeping with the Ryder Cup. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, little bit of a backup at 14. PGA.com's featured group coverage continues after this. Three players leading the way in the opening round of this PGA Championship. Here's one of them, Charlie Hoffman, starting on the back. He's out in front of our featured group, making it from long range. Put one of the birdies on the board. And then 
the very next hole. The hole our featured group is waiting on right now. Hoffman in there close and another birdie. So Charlie Hoffman has cut the hair. He's all business, a four-time PGA Tour winner. Tied for the lead with J.B. Holmes and Matt Wallace. Charlie is easy going. He's also a couple of groups in front. So, the attention shifting back to our group here on the 14th. And the green is clear for Kapka, who's one shot back. And let's take a look at Top Tracer, presented by Michelob Ultra. This hole playing about as long as it can play at 167 yards today. We're going to see a lot of that. About five yards past the hole location, the large collection area sits four feet below the surface of the green. So prudent play below the hole for Kepka. all about the angles. See this T here is massive. It's actually about the size of the green. And the wind quartering out of the right. All right, so that shows you the wind meter tiger feeling a little help, Steve, but that's not what's going on, and he knows it. If there's anybody that tries to judge wind anymore, I'd like to know. A windologist. No, that's not a word. Should be. Right at it. Maybe that help that he felt was actually there. If you're in between clubs, you have to take the shorter club. Don't make your mistake long. He's already made double. Just yeah. trying to make some pars, trying to get back. Don't force the issue much too early to do that. Yeah, clearly, the help that he felt wasn't there. He wasn't taking any chances. So two on the green in front of Molinari. A guy that just needs a quality shot here. You expect it out of him. Unflappable at times. That's right about where Charlie Hoffman was a couple of groups ago. Good shot from Francesco Molinari. These guys are usually pretty good with seven or eight or nine irons off a tee from a flat lie. CNN's new original series, The Movies, will give insights and behind the scenes glimpses into some of the most beloved and influential films from the dawn of cinema to present day. The Movies premieres Sunday, July 7th at 9 p.m. only on CNN. We got all the makings of a great movie right here. All the drama, we talked about it at the Open. Steve, you look back at Brooks Kepka just beat everybody at the U.S. Open at Shinnecock. Nobody was gonna run him down. That was a dominating performance. But then the very next major, it was Tiger in the lead and everybody thought this was the going to be the capping moment of the comeback and it was Francesco in the group with him going bogey free at Carnoustie taking the lead and the title away Kepka making his statement here at this tournament which was the next major championship in August but of all people to hold off it was the hard charge from Tiger Woods and then you go to the Masters Kepka finishes runner up Molinari leading most of the way through the final round. He's in the final group. The tee shot in the water at 12, and it's Tiger right there to capitalize. He takes it away from Francesco. Has to dodge a couple of late bullets from Brooks to do it. The majors have run through these three guys for the last year. 
And they certainly have. It's it's it shows you how difficult golf is, though, and how the level of precision, one poor mistake uh, mentally or physically can just cost you the, the title. And granted, there's only one winner, right? These guys, these guys would love to win every single event, and they knock on the door more than anybody. And when you knock on the door a lot, a lot of times you're going to be able to walk through. So it's, uh, they, they've, they've, they've traded blows, and uh, they're going to be uh, they're battling it out here in New York for another one. Tiger got to win number 80 after being the runner up to Brooks Kepka at this tournament in August. He got to win number 80 at East Lake. Then, of course, picked up win 81 at the Masters. Just trying to feel his way around, trying to, what, how's his body going to react from all of the practice that he's put in and I know we haven't seen him in a lot of tournaments recently but you could bet he's been working hard on his game in back in South Florida. Never really had the left turn in it that he saw. Low spot on the property, pretty easy to pick up. These guys would know that, Steve, down there to the right. He thought that ridge was going to hold it. It's always very difficult when you're climbing a ridge, and you don't see many putts being holed when you're climbing a ridge and going to another back terrace from 30, 40 feet. I don't even care if you have a shorter putt. It's always difficult to change levels and actually hold the putt, read it properly, and, and hold it. A lot of judgment and a little bit of luck involved in there, too. Now Kepka, another chance to join the lead. Oh, and he knew it. Had a couple of shorter looks. Could easily be three or four under right now. He'll take two and make it a three-way tie for the lead again. And that's exactly the type of start that you anticipate or that you imagine the night before starting a major championship. When you start on this back nine, this, this difficult start, two under through five. Fantastic. I guarantee you he'll take it. Francesco looking for his first birdie of the day. One of the best looks at it. Had a pretty good look at 11. Capitalizes at 14. Smooth as pool tables, these greens at the black are this week. There was always that idea that maybe early in the year the golf course wouldn't quite be in in the shape that you would expect but Mike Hadley the superintendent here at the black and his staff have done an amazing job at getting this golf course ready for a major that maybe wasn't positioned uh, you wouldn't think that would be positioned uh, properly in the northeast in in May but spectacular conditions uh, we would have been fine 10 degrees colder. We would have been fine 10 degrees warmer. We might get both before the week is out. Right around 60 right now and downright pleasant. But some work left here for Tiger. Missed from about this range at the first hole of the day and made double. So they will head across Round Swamp Road. And the teeth of this golf course are coming up next for this feature group. Kepka tied for the lead. Tiger and Molinari trying to chase him down. Oh my God. Wow. It is it went down. Is pain. down. I didn't know what to expect. 
No one in the history of a game's ever fused their lower back and be able to return to sport. Yeah, Tiger's back, but how far back? It's been five years since I've won a golf tournament, but when I got back into the mix, it felt like normality. Are you serious? We haven't seen that in a while. It's been great for golf. It's been great for him. He's exceeded a lot of people's expectations. He's got his body right. He's got his mind right. He's playing some good golf. There's a little of that old Tiger magic. This whole year has been an evolution of whether or not I can do this again. One of the greatest comebacks in sports history. My emotions were starting to swell up. That's what they came to see. To go against the best players in the world and take them down. That's a hell of a comeback. Tiger's hunted them down, and now he's gone in for the kill. I am compelled to say, oh my goodness. Waited for years. Many doubted we ever see it. The return to glory. It has been fun to watch. Tiger Woods looking to take the next step this week. He's got a 156 man field. Over 7,500 yards worth of beastly golf course standing between he and the Wanamaker Trophy. This man tied for the lead defending champion Brooks Kepka on the tee at 15. This fairway doesn't exactly fit his traditional fade. One thing that's difficult on this 15th hole is there's not a lot of good targets to aim at. This is one of the first holes uh, that they've played today without any fairway bunkers. So they're going to have to pick a tree, something in the distance to really key in on to get the tee shot perfect. Great look here. Very elevated second also. Brooks will struggle from where he is. Just a little bit there on the inside corner of the dog leg. For a bit of a shorter hitter, that's a very important fairway to hit. For that. So two in the fairway at 15. Kepka will have a little bit of an adventure, and we mentioned the big comeback from Tiger Woods. We all know the story, but it's getting hard to keep track of all the numbers, so let's see where we are now. He's at 15 major championships. So at at stake this week, a chance to get to 16 and be just two off of the professional number of Jack Nicholas. <laughs> that number is going to be an interesting discussion coming up. We'll get back to that. It would tie Sam Snead for the most all time victories. He would tie Hagen and Nicholas for the most PGA championships. And oh, by the way, be number one in the world again. And Steve, you could have stopped all of this had you just not reminded him to move his coin back. <laughs> well, 23 years ago in that U.S. Amateur, it was uh, it was something I saw firsthand. This man flips a switch better and faster than anybody I've ever seen, and you know to, he, he's done it his whole life. And it, you, you would think, being on the outside, what he did at Augusta earlier in this year was nothing short of a miracle. And lo and behold, he's back in the mix right now. Well, you read the game stories from the 86 Masters when Jack Nicklaus won and how historic that was and how much fun that was for everybody, kind of coming out of nowhere. It had been six years since his last major championship, but all those game stories said that was his 20th major. 
That wasn't his 18th professional major. Nobody kept track of those. That was his 20th major. Now, so is the current leaderboard, is it 18 to 15? Or is it 20 to 18? Well, I guess you could debate that till the cows come home, but. Well, there was no debate in 86. That was the number. <laughs> Jack Nicholas had won two U.S. amateurs. And then all of a sudden, this man came along and won three. And somehow, the line moved. It was before Twitter, so I don't even know who to blame. <laughs> Take a look at the ball positions here at 15. The player's trying to hit it down that right side a little bit more. The whole location in the back left. Kepka is going to be iffy. He, he, if you miss it big enough at a major championship, you've got a big elevation there as well. But if you miss it big enough and far enough off the fairway, sometimes you get in a trampled down area. But it's a huge elevation change, 39 feet, some one and a half clubs uphill to this 15th hole. It's all about the lie you have on your second shot. And yeah, we'll see. We saw the Kepka's ball did indeed go outside the ropes. He'll need everything he can get. Bit of a blind shot. Up to the top of the hill. Very intimidating look here as the players stand. They, the, those bunkers that sit in the front just kind of smack you in the face a little bit. And they. They really tell you what you have to do with the second shot. You got to hit it high and you got to hit it soft. And this green has some of the biggest contours of any green on the property here. Now the green not clear again. And there are two groups over on 16 as they play back down the hill. So we've just kind of come to a bit of a screeching halt here pace of play wise they were supposed to play in less than five hours that's the expected pace of play chart we have very little wind we have soft scorable conditions and we ain't getting done in less than five hours this is as good as it could get major championship pressure fast greens long rough you have to mark the ball a lot. <laughs> the faster the greens get, the slower the play. I, I, I would say it, it, the, for a rule of thumb at your home golf course, setting that up, if you're a superintendent out there listening, uh, I'm sure you know, but the slower the greens, the faster the rounds. And look, this is a major championship. This is, this is big time. So, And it's entertainment, too. Yes. We're, we're being entertained just like you are at home. The greens this week are at championship speed, and that is just fine for Matt Wallace, who is leading alone now. Just picked up another birdie. Take a look at how Matt Wallace has gotten there. He birdied one and two right out of the box and then just made this over at the par five fourth. You'd much rather start over there. Half the field will start over there today. The other half will start over there tomorrow. And Matt Wallace, a four-time European Tour winner including two last year, showing the whole world that he indeed is one of the best players in the world, and there he is. Taking advantage of the easier parts of that golf course for sure. It's what you have to do. Matt Wallace is champion. Matt Wallace was in that Ryder Cup discussion. And it just seems like every year there is somebody like Matt Wallace that doesn't make that European Ryder Cup team. There's a lot of discussion about how he should, and then they win anyway. Tiger's the captain of this year's President's Cup team. He's going to have Ryder Cup captain Steve Stricker as one of his assistants. He will be a playing captain. It seems like it. You would, you would think maybe not... Uh, entire lock at this point but the last playing captain that the American side has had in the Ryder Cup goes all the way back to 1963 it was Arnold Palmer who did it at Eastlake incidentally or Tiger won a couple of months ago we still have a couple of years to decide how that's going to go Steve Stricker and Padraig Harrington will captain the next Ryder Cup at Whistling Straits I'm sure, I'm sure if Tiger doesn't make it, he will uh, 
have a good chance maybe to pick himself. I would. I feel pretty good <laughs> about his participation in Australia sure. the President's Cup this year. I think that seems likely. All right, Tiger with the honor here as the green is clear. He's got 208. 208 playing 221. This ball will come in lower to this elevated green. See a chase on there. Tremendous, tremendous shot. Makes it look so easy, but that shot, the average player hits that ball a lot of different places other than 15 feet perfectly below the hole. How early did he know that it was going to kick right? Thinking about it, hoping for it, can't quite see it. And then the crowd told him the story. Now Molinari from 201. Not as great of an angle from the left side. Just getting on or next to this putting surface in two. Very strong, although he's not entirely pleased with that one. And Kepka, that sounded juicy. This is his second from 205 and able to get it up there. Like I said, miss it big. Get in a spot where the gallery has trampled. If that was in that. That thicker, untouched rough, no chance he would have been able to hit that shot. I don't care, even if it's Brooks Kepka in his strength, wouldn't have been able to do it. Yeah, there were guys saying that it used to be the six iron, that was the number. We wouldn't try anything more than a six iron. And this week they were thinking it might have been a couple of clubs less than that. But Brooks able to muscle that one all the way up there. So three birdie putts coming up here in this featured group. At 15, they'll walk up the big hill, then they'll turn around and play back down the big hill. This is a wonderful amphitheater setting here. Beth Page State Park. That's a good look down the hill. They're yeah, one of the steepest climbs, if not the steepest climb on the tire golf course. Very heavily pitched green from back to front. A lot of par four and a halfs here at Beth Page Black. And if Tiger can sneak out this putt, for birdie, he's going to pick. He's going to pick a good shot and a half up on the field by day's end. I guarantee that. There's only been one birdie today at 15, and you nailed it, Steve. It's a par four and a half, 4.48. Those Tigers are waiting their turn. There's no way he should be talking to somebody like her in an outfit like that. The Tiger onesie. He said, hey, what do you think? Hawkeye showing us the undulations of the green. I think bowl effect in that front. You may see the whole location down there one of the four days, but just a tremendous par four, gorgeous amphitheater. If you're going to come and watch some golf, That'd be a good spot to do it. Outside of PGA.com. Mm -hmm. We're glad to have you with us. Tell your friends this is the only spot to watch this round right now. And it's a thrill to get to sit with you and enjoy all four major championship trophies in this group. So the last time you had all four major championship trophies in one group, it was when this man had them all. So it was kind of <laughs> easy. <laughs> he just carried them around with him. Yeah. And then there were plenty of times when he had three of the four. So this occurrence has happened. But to see it spread out over three guys, and then we told you about the history between the three of them, and they've gone back and forth. The three not great friends. There's no bad blood either. Tiger and Brooks have played a little bit, living not too far from each other in South Florida. But playing together plenty in moments like this. This will climb the hill, break from his right to left a bit. Just looking to get the speed down. 
Probably take a four and run to the next hole, and that was woefully underjudged there. Someone let the air out of the tires. Putting right against that collar, it was right behind him, may have influenced the stroke there a little bit. Yeah, that had to be at least a partial miss hit. Now Kepka to tie for the lead. Turns into a good stock four there for Kepka. Whenever you can tap it in for par here on this 15th hole, you're very happy. Tiger's looking to better that by one, though, with his birdie effort. He's sliding to his right ever so slightly, and he knows this would be a big momentum boost in the round. Not only would it get him going in his first birdie of the day, but it would get him going on a hole where not many people are making birdies. This green reading is presented by SoFi. Easy to overread this one for Tiger. He's right in between the lines. And he's in the bottom of the cup. First birdie of the day for Tiger Woods. The Back one to one over. The one intangible that Tiger Woods always has had was the sense for the moment. Sense for, I know we're early in the first round, but he always knows when a birdie will propel him to do more great things, especially on a hole like this where there's just not many given up. Just the second birdie of the day at 15. He just knows it's that, it's that confidence knowing that you've not only made a birdie, but you've stole one from the field. says Steve Scott. Now this is to try to make up for a mistake here from Molinari. What just happened to Francesca? A three putt bogey from a seemingly innocuous position. Always difficult to and, and disheartening to follow up a, a birdie with a bogey, especially like that. As Brooks solidifies his par here on 15. Take the climb up to the 16th tee. Will they prepare for the launch? Golf Tracks will show us this hole, which is well, a whole lot more fun for the public when they come here to the People's Country Club at Bethpage. Pretty dramatic drop off the tee. Only about 60 yards off the tee, there's a crest of a hill. You cannot see exactly where the landing area is. You can see the fairway in the distance, but the fairway does not sit perfectly to the eye of the player from this tee. Getting the ball on the left side of the fairway will give the players a much better opportunity to attack this back left hole location. Kind of opens up the hole a little bit. This green's very flat, though, as we find a lot here at Beth Page. And the players can give themselves a, a, a shot on the green. They will have a wonderful opportunity for birdie here. We'll play a little shorter than its 488 yards as it traverses down the hill. Actually playing under par right now for the championship. 14th easiest hole on the golf course. Five birdies today, just four bogeys. I would say that's hole location related. I think I think this back left hole location is the easiest hole location on the green. The most difficult would be in that front right portion. So just Alex Norin in the group in front. Waiting to hit his approach shot. Tiger seems ready to go here. He'll be back up on top of this hill again in a moment. The 18th tee.
Always nice as a player when you're sitting on an elevated tee. Always feels like some extra freedom knowing that you're going to just get ready to launch it far and wide. And I saw Tiger on the range today playing with the tee heights a little bit. Tee the ball nice and high and get that high launch. A little extra carry, but I like what he's doing here. I, I, and I've liked this since his back fusion. The way he, he does his practice swings, very long and languid motion. Just trying to free up that backswing for a full coil. Everything has faded slightly today for Tiger, but not this one. And you got a little room to work it on from that left side, but that's not what he was hoping for. Well, these, these players are not only looking to hit the fairways, they're looking to hit portions of the fairways and try to squeeze it down that left side a little too much. You pay the price. Just overcut the last tee shot. Corrections made. When you pick up your tee soon after you strike the ball, always a, uh, a good feeling. Confident sign there. Now Molinari hasn't done too much wrong today. Bad tee shot at the very first hole today. And then we're not sure exactly what just happened at 15. This hole fits his preferred shot shape. We have not seen one in the first cut of rough yet out of this featured group. We'll see how that affects Francesco Molinari when we come back. Brooks Kepka, just one back. The opening round of the PGA Championship here on PGA.com. I'd like to welcome folks watching on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube as well. I'm Brian Katrick along with Steve Scott, our Turner Sports crew. Enjoying our time here, Beth Page Black. Tiger has a gnarly lie in the left rough here. Just made his first birdie of the day. That is a less than gnarly lie for Francesco. Francesco and his caddy, Peyo Iguaran, who was the first Spanish caddy to ever caddy for an Open Championship winner. Yeah, considering he caddied for Jose Maria Olazabal in the past as well. Definitely a veteran walking the fairways. Always unpredictable coming out of this first cut of rough. Sometimes you get jumpers, sometimes you get a ball that that spins, so see if he, Francesco can judge this right from 173. Yes, he can. What a shot for Francesco Molinari. And an answer after the bogey back at 15. Spectacular. What a <laughs> what control that ball definitely did not jump out of that first cut. Well judged, well judged. Tiger looking to just pitch this down the fairway with his practice motions here. He's got 168 yards to the hole. See if he can hack something out of there. Back in the stance, get very steep with it. Can you chase it on? See how thick that lie was. Oh my goodness. A whole lot of Long Island came up out of the ground there. Pretty well done to get it to there. There's a lot of bad things that can happen 
when you're in rough as thick as that. Just shortened Long Island slightly. Now Kepka. There's some eight yards closer at 160. And a good shot there. Brooks one shot off the lead right now. Another chance to get one back with the putter. Tiger knew he was going to struggle from over there. Did not get anything at all with the lie. Got the chance to speak to him the last couple of years and this is a guy that told us all. He wasn't sure he was ever going to play golf again. You heard it in the piece a couple of segments ago. And then the concern became for him. Could you even have an active lifestyle? Both his children are very active. They're playing soccer. He's got a, a great backyard. He wants to run around. And you're a father, Steve. You, I think every parent out there listening, especially you remember the young scampering ages of your kids. Well, that's what he's got. He's got, got a couple of young scamperers. They're jumping around on him. And you want to be a good dad. You don't want to be that sore, grumpy dad. <laughs> oh, he loves playing soccer with his kids and. Certainly great to see him soften up over the years as a person. You can hear it in the interviews that he gives. Uh, and golf became okay. secondary at that point in time. And then you go back even to a couple of weeks ago. The event in Charlotte that he had won before and you expected that to be his start in between the Masters and here and. And he said he wasn't ready because he wasn't ready to get ready. He was still celebrating the Masters win and that was a very. Normal guy thing to do for a guy that doesn't get to do. A whole lot of normal things and why wouldn't you celebrate it? It was. The greatest moment in all of sports. <laughs> Is that where you've got it ranked? I, you've got it number one. I, I think so. I mean, it's, it's tremendous. But just inside of 30 yards here for his pitch. Pretty basic pitch and run. Oh, maybe even better than that. It's a type of shot that you would practice all day long back at home flat life with plenty of green to work with and medium soft greens perfectly executed there spin control trajectory control so a little bit of a tester for par but not much that club that 60 degree lob wedge has defied tiger so far today but not there He's knocking some of the rust off. I mean, we are we are seeing the rust being knocked off. This get a can of rust-oleum out there and kind of, but we're seeing that. I mean, a month off of playing competitively, but as we shift over to Kepka here now, who has not taken a lot of time off, should have got a nice read from that pitch shot. Incidentally, that Tiger just played, sliding from his left to right ever so slightly. You get the sense that he's due here, Steve. And the one that moved a little bit more. He's overread some of the breaks so far today, and that one moved more than he expected. And Kepka has given himself a chance on every hole. He hasn't threatened a bogey yet. He's only missed one green today, and every putt has looked like it had a chance to go in. Except for that one, really. How good was the shot by Molinari? Tiger's not even inside of it yet. And there was a time during the heyday when these were utter formalities, and it was one of the many areas of the game that got completely overlooked. We, you know, so many other things that were more spectacular, that garnered more headlines, and you just forgot how solid he was inside five feet. I'll have to say if there's a weakness in his game on tour it has been this distance right here this year. Yeah really struggled with it at the end of last year also we saw him go with a couple different putters. Even a, a different head style going with that mid mallet. 
These greens here at Beth Page are going to make a lot of players look really good, even if their form into this week has not been so spectacular. But this one's pretty straight up the hill here. <laughs> not much. This is your distance for par for birdie, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I think we can all relate to these, and Francesco is up to the task. What a shot in there. That's the, the dream birdie putt at 16. Still not sure what happened back a hole ago, and he may still be thinking about it, but just a weird three putt. We thought the first one might have been a miss hit, but then he left the second one short also. Nonetheless, he's one over. And Kepka now to stay two under. So that was leading just a couple of holes ago. The defending champion playing the tough holes. Not everybody has uh, has played these tough holes. Matt Wallace is over on the front nine, which is by far the easier start. Now you get out to six, things start to get a little tougher. But Matt, not concerned. Already three under par on the day, able to curl that one in. Wallace, four under through his first six. And he's the leader right now. It's a couple of Englishmen at the top. What do you think of that putting grip that Matt Wallace was showing us with the little the trigger fingers? He's got, the, he's got an interesting putting, the grip on the putter itself, and it allows him to put both of his index fingers down the shaft, which is a little unique, but it's certainly working for him today. Kepka just two shots back. Tommy Fleetwood played great the last trip he made to Long Island. Almost tracked down Kepka, shot 63. And Shinnecock in the final round. Golf tracks taking us to 17. And only a portion of this 17th green surface is visible from the tee. All located in the front right today. Definitely the easier location in the lowest portion of this green. Playing 199 yards. You should see a few birdie opportunities here where this hole is located. It's certainly much easier than that back left higher terrace. Nobody's birdied it yet. Seven bogeys today on 17. Perhaps we'll see the first one coming up next. Stream live sports on BR Live. Watch the UEFA Champions League, UEFA Europa League, National Lacrosse League, and more. Live over everything. There's the group in front. And there's nowhere for them to go either. And look at all of the people. It is a scene here. Whenever you come to the New York market for anything, they're boisterous and they come in droves. And when you have a grouping like this of the last three major champions. Well, there's no question where the show is this morning and we're thrilled to be a part of it here on PGA.com and the hope you would imagine for these guys and all of these fans was that these three would still be a part of the story by the time they got to the turn and they are Kepka just two back Tiger and Francesco just one over I think the interesting thing about the routing here at Beth Page Black you have the first hole and then the 15th through 18th holes on one side of that Cedar Swamp Road. Round Swamp Road. Round Swamp Road. There's probably cedars in there. <laughs> and, and so you're going to see, the, it's, like a, it's like two different arenas, essentially. This 15th to 18th and the first, there's going to be, I would say, 75% of the entire population of the gallery is going to be situated in these five holes and really 15 through 18 and and so this this 17th hole is just a without being a stadium tpc per se <laughs> this is as close as you get to that type of arena it's a wonderful 
amphitheater setting and there have been talks about the 18th and we're going to talk about the 18th when we get there but maybe a rerouting and one of them was to have it be played from over here near the 17th tee and while that may or may not have done anything you wanted to do to the playing of the 18th hole it would have taken away from this atmosphere slightly that you're talking about more room for more folks this way. Opening rounds of major championships are studied in patience. Tiger knows that. Francesco knows that. And he's ready to go. This from 199. This shot plays a few yards uphill. You see that elevation change and a little bit of the freshening breeze hold that ball up. There is a finger of that front right bunker that does stretch all the way up in front, and he may be there. Good look here and into the wind here, as you mentioned, Steve. There's the boisterous crowd applauding him before he even hits. They're going to have a Ryder Cup here in a couple of years. Standing room only at 17 for Tiger. And that a rifled six iron on its way. Also short and right. That's all right, Tiger. Let's go, Brooks. Let's go, Brooks. Not an awful leave down there. Fairly simple uphill bunker shot, but. Just not quite enough. Sometimes hard to judge that win when you do have all this gallery and behind the green. Now Kepka, nice judgment off of those two tee shots. Hopefully he's got enough Cameras, please. Thank you. bat to make the putting surface here. You always learn more being the third player. Let's take a look at Top Tracer presented by Michelob Ultra. Steve, he indeed did learn a little something, wasn't messing around with that front right bunker. I guess that's why we haven't seen any birdies here today on 17. Well, they're not going to feel a whole lot of that wind back there. And now the walk. Could you imagine this setting in a Ryder Cup when you only have 24 players and all of these sports fans, which are the most vocal in the game and maybe in all of sports rooting against half of those guys. They're not supposed to, but you're not going to be able to stop it. It's going to be an unbelievable scene. Not that not that it isn't already an unbelievable scene, but that'll be five years from now in 2024. But the New York market is, is just a it's a hotbed of golf. This is the start of their golf season up here, and they get the opportunity to watch the greatest players in the world do their thing. And, you know, it's going to spur on all of these people in person and at home and or wherever you're watching our telecast here. It's going to spur them on to want to wanna go out there and go play this afternoon or next week, whenever. A lot of folks went right up the middle of that walkway by the way not sure there's that many folks that are supposed to be walking up the middle of the fairway you can't tell the media where to go no you can't tiger not thrilled with his situation and francesco is going to be right next to him i mentioned there is a finger of that bunker that comes all the way up to right where francesco's walking And that is the body language of a guy that is rolling up the sleeves. Very possibly could have plugged in the face. That's the way he's acting and. Francesco's coming back down to the bottom here, maybe why he's. 
playing first. Barely see the top of his cap. Green sits some six feet above the surface of that bunker. And players can only see the top portion of that flag stick from down there. Oh my goodness, this is awkward. And yeah, very likely plugged. This is this is the Australian raking. So for a ball to stop there, it is a fried egg. Bad luck, really. Manufacture a stance here. He just came up with a par at 16, having to do it again at 17. Came shooting out of there, and he'll have to do it with the putter. Can't believe it. Yeah, Joey can believe it, Tiger. It wasn't going to be easy. And he knew it. You're trying to claw your way back into the round, build a little momentum the other way, and you get a break like that. You know, he might only have a, a, a lie or a stance like that. Less than a handful of times in the whole year. And it had to happen right now. Well, better Thursday than any other day, I suppose. And a tough hole. There's going to be a lot of fours here. Kepka's second. Very careful with that and very nicely done. Another tidy par, it looks like. For the number three player in the world. Boy, all of the stress that Francesco and Tiger are having just does not seem to be affecting Brooks. He is playing in a different realm right now. He's cool as ice. Call him Iceman. Right? He just he's just so calm. Yeah. In a situation where Frankly, if you put anybody else out there, they're not going to. We go out there and play. We're not going to be calm. Our heart's going to be going out of our chest. And no question. But he just looks like he's it's a stroll in the park. If you're going to make a long one, this is a pretty good place to do it because they'll hear it all over the county. This is for par. Oh, and he killed it. Whoa. Trying to play defense from up there, and that was playing offense from a defensive situation. What happened there? Well, Tiger is as good mentally as anybody in any sport that's ever lived, but I got to say that he probably was still reeling just a little bit from that poor break. I mean, he's human, right? It's, it's, it's not like you can just put up a wall and forget completely what happened. You have to do that as a professional golfer, but that's, again, that's some of that rust. We're just trying to, those are all those things that happen during the course of a round, how to handle adversity, how to handle certain lies, so. All right, Molinari for his par. Just coaxed it in. As you can see, it's been a bit of a roller coaster for Francesco so far. Tiger's going to give this one his full attention. And I say that because the next five holes that he's going to play, he's going to have four great birdie opportunities. And he knows that right now. Again, it's, it, it's about momentum and building and or maintaining momentum during the course of a round. He knows what he's got to face in these next few holes. He knows if he can get this one in, even though it's for bogey, it's going to feel a lot better going into those scoring holes. Just saw the read on it. It's a putt you can keep inside the hole. This would be a huge four for Tiger Woods.
a double to start the round, which was sloppy. And the first double of the day at 17. And Tiger has shot himself in the foot here. Where did that come from? You have a ball on a tee from a perfect lie. You can maybe forgive the one on 10. But as a player, that's unforgivable. Kepka saves the par. No sweat for the defending champion. Two under, two back. Great stretch coming up next. We go to the tee at 18. Tiger last to play in the group. This one would have hit it if it was four yards wide. So that should lead to one of those good birdie opportunities that you were talking about, Steve. That the last in the group, this before that, it was Francesco. Nice tight draw out there. Just stopped short of that fairway bunker over there. He's in the intermediate cut again. And then Brooks in between with the driver. Trying to carry everything down the right-hand side, which you can do. Well, he can do. And look at that ball just stopped. Perfection there. Would have carried everything had he needed to down the right hand side. That was a 302 yard drive with a foot of roll. Matt Wallace at four under just made par out of the par four seventh. It's a converted par five. There's Brooks Sam Burns. Two under Tommy Fleetwood right there. Sam Burns was on the web.com tour last year. One on it. A rookie out on the PGA Tour. Making a little bit of a splash. There's Max Home up. He just won in Charlotte a couple of weeks ago. Club professional Jason Karen. Local Met PGA professional at Mill River Club here on Long Island. Even par through 12 as well. 20 PGA professionals in the field. That is the case. Five of them from this Met section, which you were a member of for a whole lot of years. And uh, of those 20, it could have been Steve Scott himself. You were in the field at the PGA Professional Championship. Gave yourself a chance. We're proud of you. I had the opportunity. Uh, certainly missed the cut, unfortunately. But fortunately, I get to call some golf here with you. And I think, I think really what it showcases is it showcases all the hats that a PGA professional can wear. And uh, I certainly enjoy, enjoy this and uh, enjoy being around the game and playing it and getting your juices going. But I don't have a 300-yard carry in my bag, maybe 270. So I, I would have had a tough time competing here. But uh, I certainly love, I love to do it. I played in the Wells Fargo recently as well. And I'll play in the Wyndham Championship later in the year. Uh, thanks to the Carolinas PGA section that I, I, I had a nice year in last year. So uh, you were the player of the year and the section champion in the largest of the sections of the PGA of America. You're, you're playing down your accomplishments, Mr. Scott, and <laughs> would have been great to see you here. Would have been a very busy week had you qualified for this. You would have done so on Wednesday in Bluffton, South Carolina and had to be in Charlotte, North Carolina the next day for the PGA Tour event. Well, I, I, I think uh, I think my future is less is less there than it is, but I enjoy what I'm doing as a PGA professional for the Silver Club Golfing Society and the Outpost Club. As we watch Tiger assess the situation here, from 137 yards, large climb up to the green, a full nine yards uphill. 
this second shot plays. Nothing a nice high fade. A little left to right spin. Can't accomplish. Nothing coming back toward the front, but a good spot. Maybe in between clubs there, didn't quite hit that full, didn't have quite the action. Spinning back that it could have, but two solid shots there in response to last hole. Joey just toss him the putter that's won 14 of his 15 major championships. Was that airborne? It's a good javelin catcher. All right, now Molinari, it was right down the middle. We lost track of it there. Here's the benefit of hitting the driver. He's got 110 yards, 109 yards, excuse me, into this front hole location. Yeah, that's kind of bread and butter for Francesco. Well done there to judge the distance. This is the type of shot, and you get the sense he's the type of player that maybe like Ben Hogan would aim away from the flag stick so he doesn't hit it accidentally. Trying to miss it by a couple of inches. Kepka from 101. Great birdie opportunity here for Brooks Kepka. And he delivers. The guy on the plane that when it starts to go through turbulence never looks up from the newspaper. That's Brooks Kepka. Everybody else is panicking. He doesn't have panic. Well, I wouldn't panic either if I won more majors than regular tour events. I <laughs> he knows his place in the game right now and he's he has solidified it. Very special, special player. Brooks Kepka is so many facets of the game, but most importantly here at Beth Page Black, just gargantuan distance off the tee, which is what you need. See, Tiger is the farthest from the hole of the group. Three good ones here at 18. You see all these flags blowing in the distance. What these players are going to find, they've basically come from the far point in the golf course all the way to this 18th hole. And now they're going to work their way back on the front nine, all the way out back to that forward part of the golf course. And what you find during the course of the day here, the wind might start out of the northwesterly uh, portion of, the, of the, the, the property. And then it switches to the west, and then even more from a southerly direction as the day moves on. So these players are going to kind of have some helping wind as they traverse this front nine. Yeah, there's really only one hole that heads back into the wind on the entire back nine because it doesn't come back to the clubhouse other than the little par three third. They'll be playing with a whole lot of help for the next couple of hours. Doesn't mean they're necessarily going to get helped by it. Well, this would be a big putt for Tiger. Should slide from his right to left a little bit. Just bounce back. I always think the bounce back stat is always the most uh, important factor in how somebody is, is feeling inside. Can he get over the issues he had back on 17? Oh, speed wrong also. Missed the line by a good six, eight inches. And kind of got away from him also. And, and you touched on it a little bit. Just nine holes here this week. He played last week, but that's the one thing. You talked about maybe Rust not playing in Charlotte, but not necessarily a feel for what's going on out on the greens just yet. That's what we're seeing from Tiger. He knows this golf course in major championships as well as anybody with a one U.S. Open win in 02 and a tied for sixth in 09. He knew he was going to be pretty comfortable around here, but just a little untiger-like 
out of the gate. Now Molinari should slide down to his right. Very quick putt. Oh, the side door and a beauty. Francesco, three early bogeys, two late birdies. And he's to make the turn. He's going to make the turn even par. That's what champions do. They right the ship after a shaky start. He's going to be, feel pretty good going over to the other nine. Now Kepka's positioned this ball as well as you can right underneath the hole. This putt should not have much break in it. These are the type of putts that Brooks Kepka pours in on a regular basis. He's one back. The man to beat is looking like the man of the hour. Bogey free, no sweat, most of the tough holes gone. Matt Wallace drops a shot, make it Kepka tied for the lead now. It's really a back nine dream start. Tiger cleans up here for his par. And a couple of tough ones for Tiger. The double at 17 is a head scratcher. He's got nine holes to dig out. We're going to watch it live right here on PGA.com. Back with you here on PGA.com featured group coverage. Francesco Molinari a moment ago at the first. Have to pick your line and your distance off this sweeping fairway here. He's done that to perfection. And this also a moment ago. Kepka now tied for the lead. And look out, way right. That's over onto the green course. And now Tiger. Can't get stuck behind those trees. And that seems to be where he went. And this may be another case, Steve, like you mentioned with Brooks, he's so far offline that it might work out. It just might. I mean, the whole location, they, they wanted to get it as far right as they could. And the longer hitters can get it over that corner there. So we'll have to see what, what kind of tree issues, if any, that Brooks and Tiger both have. Yeah, I'm not sure Brooks may have escaped here. He, he may be okay. Although it would take a couple hours to get here from there. Co-leader checking it out. You used to work not too far from here. Paramount Country Club, another A.W. Tillinghast design. That was, it's over on the mainland across, uh, what's the bridge? The Tappan Zee Bridge. Okay. I think they maybe call it the Cuomo Bridge now or something. But sure. they just built a brand new bridge over there. Several million, if not billion dollar bridge. <laughs> a lot of bridges yeah. around here. A lot of tolls, too. Yeah, they asked, do you want the toll pass? And I think the answer is yes. <laughs> have a whole lot of tolls. All right, let's find these tee shots here at the first. Golf tracks will sort it out. There you see all the trouble that they could get into. Tiger may have just squirted past that tree on the right. Kepka may just barely have some branches in the way. 
Yeah, it's just a, it's a little bit of a luck thing over there to the right. But they're just trying to, it's all about the angle in a lot of respects. You get that whole location on that left side. If they can avoid those trees there, they're going to have a pretty good look at it. I mean, they're going to have a, 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 a sand wedge, lob wedge to this first hole. So. Francesco can kind of glance over there. Hey, there's, there's no trouble in the middle, fellas. One of the easiest holes on the golf course, actually also playing under par. And Molinari will be first. From the dead center of the fairway. Beautiful flat lie, green light situation. Looking away in disgust, though. Not his best, not his worst. I'll have a birdie look from there. Tiger situation again in the rough. A little thinner lie. Sometimes you get that underneath the canopy of the tree. Wonderful bounce there off the collar of the rough inside Molinari's. That yeah, was well that, done there. That was a nice, not sure exactly what was going on in the air there, Steve, but the ground helped him out. Well, wherever you're in the rough, you just want to make sure you don't short side yourself. Now Brooks. And the guy that seemed like he was in the most trouble gets out of it. Maybe he was in the least trouble. He just manufactured something. That to take the lead alone. That divot that he took right there could have started a sod farm. And yet the ball had action on it. You tell me how you do that. Uh, he's uh, a lot of push-ups. <laughs> Four players at three under, and if those those around the golf course looking around at the scores, they're they're going to know that this man is about to hit a stretch. Wedge here, you'll have a wedge at two. He has wedges where a lot of players don't have wedges, but you get it. Four is reachable. He's got an opportunity to definitely separate himself in the early goings here. And, and shots like that, Steve, you've, you've seen the back and forth in the media. Brooks, we know he's immensely long, but he doesn't seem, to, you know, doesn't, he doesn't knock down the flag sticks very often. He's not making 40 footers. He's not hitting highlight reel shots. He's not a highlight reel type of guy. But there was one right there. He doesn't seem to be in too much trouble, which is why he never seems to get out of too much trouble. <laughs> just, uh, just makes the. The difficult look easy. And he wants to be number one in the world. I guarantee you he that's he's two spots away from it right now at three. And he knows that a win here would go a long way to making that happen. Yeah, I believe there are six players. Everybody in the top six can get there with a win this week. Oh, golf ranking complications or uh, calculations are hard. There's Molinari. Just needed some pace. Yeah, this this green sits just a little on the uphill. The hole is low, kind of cut into that corner of the green there. We'll see how the hole is tilted. Just ran out of pace working up that hill. These greens and excess of 12 on the step meter. I think you wouldn't have to hit an uphill putt that hard, but sometimes you do. Now, Tiger should have gotten a great teach off of that speed right there. Sloppy double to start. An 85-yard third shot. 
After missing the fairway, and it wasn't a terrible situation, he chose to lay up. Seemed like he was making a smart, patient decision, and then a sloppy third leads to six. Plugged lie back at 17 leads to another double. How many of these can you make on the way in? Well, there's one. A birdie of the first for Tiger. Back to two over. And he's not even willing to smile about it. This is a fight right now going on with him. We're uh, we're in the middle of about the seventh round right now, Steve. And so far, the black course is still ahead on points. <laughs> well, he sees what Brooks is doing right in front of him. He knows he's got to do something just to keep pace. Now this for the lead. Yeah, Kepka right where you imagine he should be. And now alone atop the leaderboard, the defending champion and the strongest force in major championships we've seen since Tiger himself is doing it again. Four under through 10 leading alone. They head back across round swamp road and there are birdies over there also. Kepka the leader as the defending champion of the 101st PGA Championship. Brooks Kepka leading the way, and we are watching his group. Featured group coverage right here on PGA.com. The three guys with all the trophies. Kepka, Molinari, and Woods, and they are in that order right now. Brooks leading everybody at four under par. A little bit of a backup at the second hole. Let's take a look at the making of a major presented by Callaway. I'm Charlie Bowling, head golf professional at Page State Park. Kevin Napier, senior tour trailer technician. Andy Wilson, I'm the director of agronomy at Beth Page Black. So with the truck, uh, the players want to have confidence that their clubs are right each and every tournament. Working with a player, making sure lofts and lies and specs are correct. Anything we can do for them, we are here to do. I oversee all the five golf courses and make sure we're all ready for uh, each day's golf and not only provide uh, good condition, but championship conditions for the players. With the PGA Championship moving to May, the major season has gotten more compressed. When we heard in 2013 we we're going to host the PGA Championship, the planning begins immediately, and that included a couple of spring practice runs where we started to take note of how the trees look, what grass was growing best that time of year, how you fertilize, when you aerate the golf course. It also moved up our construction schedule. We were rebuilding uh, many bunkers on the golf course, and that gave us half a season less to get that stuff ready, too. Getting to Bethpage on time with this truck is something that has to happen. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Going from Dallas to Bethpage, 2,600 miles round trip is a little bit of a challenge. This truck, if it has to be towed there, it will be there. Bethpage Black is in tremendous condition right now. Maybe the best greens I've ever seen. The putting greens were not aerated in the fall at all, and they haven't been aerated this spring. The goal there is to get them as firm as possible. While the fescue won't be as high, the rough is lush. May, it's actually probably a stronger month for us uh, in terms of turf conditions. Divots grow back better, ball marks heal in faster. Players need as much time as they can to practice on that course to get dialed in. There may be different conditions that they need a different club. They may need to tweak a loft or a lie. Weather up and down the East Coast has been a challenge, so even when players are planning to come in early, we've had some cancellations due to rain. I think the experienced players here have a nice advantage over the rest of the field. A successful PGA tournament for us. A successful PGA Championship. What would make the PGA Championship great this week would be to have the best players in the world in a tight grouping to play the final four holes. When the final putt goes in, hopefully we have a great champion. We can look each other in the eye and say, job well done. All of our players putting on a good performance. This truck taking care of our players, accommodating their needs, and then certainly maybe a Callaway win.
So we go to the tee at the second. A moment ago, our leader, Brooks Kepka. Just an iron. The preferred position is down the left, although it seems like the easier tee shot is the right. Classic Tillinghast here. Also a moment ago, Francesco. Tillinghast was all about angles, sweeping fairways right, left, very reminiscent of a winged foot design. And then Tiger. And we're going to see several examples of it here on this front nine where the easier tee shot leads to the harder approach. Pretty simple concept, Steve. You know all about it, having been the head PGA professional at a Tillinghast design for a number of years. Paramount Country Club. For sure. It's, it's, it's about risk-reward. The great architects of our time build golf courses in that risk-reward scenario. And yeah, you should, you should be rewarded for a brave tee shot or a brave approach. And uh, certain angles of the fairway give a better, you know, better position to attack certain hole locations. And this one on number two being in this front right portion, kind of like Brooks's position there in that left side of the fairway a little bit better. Yeah. If I can pick it, it would be like a 30 shot. Yeah. What is it, 36, you said? 30. 39. What's the front edge? Love that they deal with already adjusted numbers. Brooks has got 130 to the hole, but they had it at 139. All the numbers they were saying were already adjusted for the hill. That's very simple. Simplicity is the answer to complexity, Brian. And Kepka just seeing everything spinning right back toward the hole. He's a magician and another good one for the leader. The high fade is his bread and butter. That whole location fit his eye perfectly. And he executed. Francesco next. Ball a fraction above his feet might not fit this whole location well. When it's above your feet, it wants to turn a little bit more right to left. Ooh. Looked like he was going to get bailed out with a little kick to the right, but it stopped. Very sticky. The rough here, bluegrass, poana, fescue mix. That's a fairway grass that he got in there. Poana and Rye. Now Tiger, the closest of the group at 110. Beautiful position, green light hole location. Got it to come forward. Good break at a good time for Tiger Woods. No doubt, kicking off the backside of that brow there. He knows it's close. He can't see it from the fairway, but the crowd reaction tells it all. Now, that wasn't the plan, was it? I don't think the plan was let's land this in the front fringe. But it worked out. Kepka hit it more on the conservative target line, a little left, spin it right. Francesco doesn't know where his is. As you just pointed out, he's got to get up there and see it. He'll be beside himself with anger. Might even break a club. Probably not. Well, this whole seeing a lot of action today. It's the only par four at Beth Page Black under 400 yards. Tiger's not going to be in smile mode just yet. We've made the, the boxing references back there at number one. You start your day with a double bogey, you're in it. You make another one a few holes later, you're really in it. 
it's going to be a while before he digs out of it. Tiger's mentality in the first round of majors, I've listened to him over the years, and par is a good score. One under, even, just somewhere around par. Get the wheels turning. He knows it's a 72-hole event. You cannot win the event today. So, up. Oh. We caught a smile. Ricky got a smile out of him. And that's what uh, the professionals, yourself among them, are so good at. There's a time to focus and there's a time to let it go. You have to flip the switch when you're playing competitive golf. Hard to be on for five hours as they're playing today. Can he flip this in? I just jumped left on him. Not bad. It'll be an easy par for Molinari. A little unlucky to be in that spot to begin with. Kepka's putt will be sliding down the hill just a little bit to his right. The greens have just such an infinitesimal amount of break to them that sometimes at the speeds that they are, it's not always simple to figure it out, but see the cup there kind of leaning towards the camera's left to Brooks's right. Should indicate that this ball is just going to ever so slightly slide to his right. But he's licking his chops here just to get to five under for the day. <laughs> Overread it. Another golden opportunity for Brooks Kepka. Hard to say that you're four under and you're leading. You could easily have been two or three better right now. <laughs> Without even blinking. And he's done nothing wrong. Tiger's done plenty wrong. Chance to do something right here. Back to back birdies. Got it. Par five coming up here in a hole. Got to dodge one more. Tough one. But that's a bit of a problem that he had to start. Some goodness coming late for Tiger. Maybe starting to get into the feel now of the round. Just nine holes of practice this week for Tiger Woods. And said yesterday, the, the word was he's fine. There was, there's no health issues. And I think that at this point in time, we got to understand. Kepka stays at four under. There's always going to be health issues, Steve. We're all about the same age. It hurts every morning. <laughs> Why burn it in practice, right? <laughs> right. It right? hurts every the old, day. The old, you're talking about practice yeah. thing, right? Don't, don't waste it in practice. Par for Francesco. <laughs> they move on to the tough. Par three third. 235 today. Green angles away to the left. Hole located 21 paces on and seven from that left side. The shot requires a very high and slightly drawing shot. The, the, the green really falls away from the player on that left side. You're going to see a lot of balls in that front right portion. 30, 40 feet right of the hole, and that back right rough is going to get a lot of action. Only two birdies on this hole today, so really, uh, this hole really sandwiched in a few of those scoring holes here, so kind of a, a, a hole that you want to make par and run to the fourth tee. Bit of a runway if you can find it for these players. Only one hole has fewer birdies on it than the third. Brooks Kepka and Tommy Fleetwood dueling on Long Island again. Kepka got the better of the Englishman the last time.
Shop online at PGA.com for the best selection of official PGA Championship tournament apparel and merchandise. Go to PGA.com. All right, we've got folks watching all over the world on all the social media platforms. Banana ball golf. Watching the way we would expect a lot of folks at work. Got the hat going with us in the background there, Steve. I like that. Don <laughs> recognizes this game. I do, too. That's a good call, Don. This is on the video game where you move the target right next to the hole and just push the button. Bogies and blues says death, taxes, and Brooks Kepka leading a major. That's what it's seeming like, isn't it? No doubt. No doubt there. Fleetwood just made bogey, so it's Kepka leading alone. Jeff says Jeff, or, or excuse me, Brooks Kepka leading a major. Water is wet, grass is green. Yep. Folks are getting used to it. See, that's not no respect. That's a lot of respect. He's beating the best field in the game right now, and he's done it before. Welcome to the 2019 PGA Championship at legendary Beth Page Black in Farmingdale, New York. On behalf of our PGA professionals, we're delighted to establish our home in May as part of a brand new cadence for golf's major championships. The PGA Championship is the major for the golfer in all of us, and it's special to conduct this year's championship at a public facility everyone can play. The PGA Championship continually delivers the strongest field in golf, and it's always filled with drama. With our move to May, the PGA Championship is positioned to boldly influence the future of our sport. As you begin your spring season of golf, our PGA professionals can help golfers of all abilities get ready to enjoy their own golf journey. So enjoy the PGA Championship, and then visit your local PGA professional and play the game you'll love for a lifetime. Everyone's welcome. You know, I got a chance to play here with Susie. And the golf course is so hard, she almost didn't smile for a minute. <laughs> but as it turns out, she did wind up smiling the whole time because she always smiles. She's a, uh, a very happy person and a very wonderful president of our organization. Tiger just now getting the ball in the ground as he is waiting for the group in front. The green just now clearing off. A couple of the guys in front went into the bunkers on the left-hand side. And you're busy down there. So here we go. from the number one greens and regulation leader on the PGA Tour right there. That was no pitch shot. That was a full out four iron right there. From 235 landing like a dart. Just ripped it. Tiger's got some ground to make up. He's five behind Brooks. I got that shot too, Tiger. Kepka, the leader, alone inside 15 feet again. Perfect example, little punch, counter punch. And I know it might seem insignificant in the first round, but those little exchanges just tell that other guy, hey, I'm here. I'm still here. <laughs> Great theater. How fortunate are we to have this seat? Could he throw another one in between them? Oh, he almost did. <laughs> that needed about two more yards. 
Well, for a hole that's playing fourth most difficult, these players made it look anything but. Just two birdies on the hole so far, and we've got three pretty good looks at it coming up. This group has lived up to the billing, this featured group here. All four major championship trophies. And before the break there, we were talking about Tiger in his back, and I think it just needs to be said. Because it's, it's the cool thing to do and the cool question to ask now, hey, T Tiger looks like he's hurt to me. Do you think he's, he's feeling his best? He is hurt. And he's always going to be hurt. He's going to be hurt at every start that he makes for the rest of his career. So you can put that part of the conversation behind you. You're not going to see him running and jumping and bouncing up and down. He's 43 years old. He's had a bunch of surgeries. That's just the new reality for where we are with Tiger Woods. The one thing that really stood out to me before the final round, actually he was interviewed after his third round at the Masters, and they said, you know, with the time change, that with the start that was moved up to his start with time was about 9.20 on that Sunday in that final group. You know, what time are you going to wake up tomorrow morning? He said, oh, about 3.45. i got to start the process, Yeah. he said, about 3.45 in the morning. So, you know, a good five and a half to six hours ahead. So, you know, I can't imagine what time he woke up this morning to get here, get all the way out to that 10th tee. There's a lot that, that goes into what we're seeing right here. Yeah, you could have second and third breakfast if you're getting up at that point. And, and not to over-dramatize it with him, about half the PGA Tour has a bad back and is hurt. And if you ask them, it's not going to be at 100%. You talk about a lower back, guys that swing this way in this sport, you just got to grin and bear it because that's the reality now. So, yes, you, everybody's got that one friend that wants to be the first one to tell you that Tiger's back is hurt, and he's right. The body has a great memory of how many golf shots you've hit in your life, and it's a, it's a very unorthodox type of move. It's not a one-plane type of motion. Your hips are moving this way, and you're moving laterally, horizontally, vertically, all at the same time. It's horizontally isn't even a word. It just sounds like it would hurt you. <laughs> I was close. Yeah. That, I did no graduate way. from Florida. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> sorry, Gators. There's no way that wouldn't hurt. <laughs> and you, you look at a guy like Brooks, who's got the same fitness regimen and discipline that we've seen out of, you know, guys that, that move piles in the NFL. He's doing it to try to avoid injury. Now, he may run right into it, which a lot of folks thought Tiger did and a lot of folks thought Rory and David Duvall did. These were the first few guys to go through and come out in shape. And Tiger and Duvall were really on the cusp of it. Rory following suit. But Brooks says he's doing it to avoid injury. Well, it's, it's all about balance in life. I don't care what you do. If you do too much of anything, it's never a good thing. So I'm sure he's got uh, all the trainers in the world that advise him on how much is too much. As Molinari lines up this birdie effort here, he's the farthest from the hole. And he's kind of the hope for the rest of us. Here's a guy who does plenty of work in the weight room. But right now, he's long enough. That was long enough, and then some. Kind of got away from him. But if the, if the courses out here get too long for a guy like Francesco Molinari, and it's only the mad bombers that are contending. Then, then we may have lost something. But as long as a guy like this is out here, still flourishing, then the game's in a good place. Oh, the, the shorter hitters in golf have to pick and choose their spots at which they play well. We've seen that with Matt Kuchar this year, winning at Mayakoba. He's had success at the RBC Heritage at Harbor Town. Shorter golf courses, you have to take advantage of them. Kepka already the leader here at four under, leading alone. A chance to extend to a two shot lead. Oh, yeah, he's got another one. Kepka is off and running. Look out. This could turn into a runaway. Reachable par five next. Sensational right there. 
We're seeing a lot of great putts hold. As the great Frank Cherkinian said in Tin Cup, somebody tackle him. The problem is there isn't anybody in this field that can. Tiger may push him, but won't knock him over. He's got cement shoes, solid. And it looks like he just made six. Business as usual for Brooks. And you know what? We used to get that look out of this guy. We still do. <laughs> we still do. That look hasn't gone away and it never will. You mentioned this number, Steve, and this is why he has a lot of chances. First in greens and regulation by a lot. To get back to even par for the championship. Better speed than the last few. He's gotten a little aggressive, but it dies left. There's that little punch counter punch I mentioned a moment ago. Brooks answers Tiger's tee shot, and then he puts the pressure on Tiger in a, in a mini sort of way. And Tiger, uh, Tiger blinks. Yeah, if you wanted to look at this as, a, as just a two-man match, there was definitely some strategy there, some gamesmanship on the part of Brooks. It was very helpful anyway to be able to answer the tee shot and then make the putt first. But Tiger's four-ish birdies away from being in a match play situation. Kepka leads by two. Molinari with a nice answer there. That one almost got away from him. He hasn't exactly had the speed right today either. See, he's still talking about it. Even par, though. Even par. So they head to one of the great par fives in major championship golf this fourth. What do you think? Uh, it's just, it's a picture postcard off the tee. Beautiful strategic elements on this hole. The, t the tighter you can get it to that fairway bunker on the left, with the, with the distance to carry that corner of 298 from the back cut there. It affords the player a, a long iron, maybe a, a hybrid of some sort into this elevated green over the Hell's Half Acre bunker there. We're seeing a tremendous amount of birdies today, 26 birdies in fact, and one eagle, a chip in from the right fairway of the green which was Max Homa a little bit earlier today. Recent champion at Wells Fargo. Just a great par five here. And this par five plays shorter than the par four seventh that we'll see here in a few moments. So it's a, it, it's a tremendous hole, but a tremendous birdie opportunity as well. Longest drive of the day was J.B. Holmes at 313. You can get close to running out of fairway. You hit it much farther than that. A very visually interesting target up there. Lots of possibilities. One of the few times in A.W. Tillinghast's design career where he punished short. Short is good on most of his courses. He's not over punished anyway, but not here. That's fourth. <laughs> so, on a reachable par five, you know there's going to be a lot of action. There are actually about nine groups on the hole, I believe. Most of the tournament on four. Kepka leading by two when we come back. The landing area just opening up. The par five fourth. And Brooks Kepka, the leader by two, is on the tee. Yeah, you can't carry right all of that. Me. That's move, no good. Move, move. And there's not even anybody in that vicinity. You can lose the ball here. A little luck required for Brooks to find that one. Although being in May, it's not quite as lush as it may have be may be uh, 
in, in a month or two time. Not a good leader. At least in that case. Coming my left, move. Just needs a little more. That's fine. 290 carries everything, and that wouldn't have done it. But it's in perfect shape now. Yeah, the main goal here, like it does on many holes out here, get the ball in the fairway, but it it's dramatically increases your birdie potential by finding the short grass here. Well, he's got all the options now. Francesco. Love his target line, Steve, there. So, sometimes 30 yards right of where the other two are starting it. He favors that draw. And you've seen his misses go that way today. And unfortunately, another one that's going to cause a layup here on number four. The search is on for Kepka's ball. First thing he's done wrong today. He still leads by two. You now have a chance to play Beth Page Black just like these guys. Play the virtual PGA Championship now in the free WGT golf game available in your app store. Opening round of the PGA Championship here on PGA.com and they have found the golf ball of Brooks Kepka. We have found the ball of Francesco Molinari and Tigers in the fairway. There was no search involved there. Kepka in the wispy grass. Francesco back there in the fairway bunker, Steve. And the ball's rolled back just uh, down to the flat a little bit. Not an easy layup by any means, though. He's going to have to carry this ball some 150. 50 yards up over the expanse of this large cross bunker here on four and way uphill. He's about 15 yards up the hill from this position in the fairway. Now this is a layup that gets your attention. Ooh, did that catch the lip? It did. It caught the lip. And he could be in big trouble. He may not have made it even to the end of the first fairway, let alone up to the second one. A hiccup from Francesco. Easy to do, easy to hang back a little bit when you're trying to get it in that elevated, up to that elevated fairway there. And he hung back just a little too far and caught it thin. Catches the lip. Kepka and Ricky trying to figure out if they can get on in two from there. And Brooks is getting mad and leaving. Fine, if you're going to use that sort of language. Or, got to go up there and pick up a spot. This is what you were talking about, Steve. You yeah. can't see the landing. It's here. completely blind from over here. He doesn't have to really go over that cross bunker. If he wants to lay up, he can. he's going kind of alongside of it. To his right, I mean, it would only be a, a wedge and a wedge from this position, depending on his lie, depending on where that tree overhangs his angle. The front bunker here is not the greatest spot to be, though, because you only see the very tippy top of the flag. So he's going to want, if he's going to lay this up, it's going to be out to the right, give himself a nice clear angle for his third. Uh, attack this whole location in the front right portion of the green. Yeah, and the green is still not clear. I don't know that Brooks has made up his mind yet. Gus, I love the, the effort of <laughs> Ricky Elliott to try to jump. Yeah, he's going to need higher ground and then a jump. 
Francesco's ball only went about 20 yards after hitting the lip. And Brooks is looking at 194 yards. It's going to allow Tiger to play first, however. Yep, ready to go now from 210. Two. Now we'll see if it'll hang on. And it will. That for Eagle for Tiger. Taking those deep front bunkers out of play. And this is the third now of, Fr of Francesco, or was that Brooks's second? That was Brooks's second. Short and left. He was able to get a tremendous amount of club on that ball. Hard to tell exactly where that, how that lie was sitting, but he got a lot more on it than he may have expected from the tee. All right, here's the third of Francesco. He's still forever. 192. Yeah, that's just going to take off with a hybrid. A popular place. At the par five fourth, but he's there in three, Steve. He has big, big issues there when you when you fail to lay it up properly on number four, but hasn't short side himself. He's going to have to uh, scramble a little bit to make his par. And the folks trying to get in position now if they come away from the clubhouse there. Heading even farther away. There's a halfway house after five. I don't know if it's open right now. Make a pretty penny if it was. <laughs> and of course, the guy's waiting for the fifth tee. Which is another great study in the Tillinghast angles. Kepka still leading by two, and he's right in front of the green in two. So disaster averted here, Steve. We could have had a ball search. We could have had worse than that. Instead, no big deal. He short sided himself a little bit, but these guys don't lay. Anytime they're 200 yards or less, they really don't like to lay up if they don't have to. He had a good enough lie where he could make it happen. Well, and you talked about this back when they were over at 13. There's only two par fives here. And that one is unreachable for almost the entire field. And this one is reachable for almost the entire field. You hate to give this one away. No doubt about that. And so you take your chances and, and scrape it up by the green and hope you get a lie. He short sided himself a little bit, but you know, if the lie is reasonable, he should be able to get this up there and continue his Birdie streak. Keep the pedal down when you're making birdies. That's what I always say. Yeah, we've looked at the scorecards. Your Tiger was really close to three in a row, and Francesco got hot a couple of holes ago. Kepka is just merciless. Steady and merciless. He hasn't, you know, he made two in a row at 18 and one. Just doesn't do anything wrong. Sizing it all up. Would you rather be where Brooks is or where Francesco is? Probably where Brooks is because if he gets up and down, he makes birdie. <laughs> okay. Look no, at you. He, he doesn't quite have as, <laughs> as much green to work with but as Francesco does. But you got to like his scrambling ability. And Brooks has just called timeout. Thank you. 
He's trying to judge the lie and trying to figure out, okay, where's my miss if this one doesn't come out? There goes uh, Bill Kratzer, our colleague here on PGA.com and TNT, and he's what he thought was a pretty straightforward situation. He's coming over to have a look, and I'm not. I'm wondering now if this may not be a an impending rules situation with Brooks. There's an abnormal ground condition. A few things. He's going to let Molinari pitch up here, it well, appears. I didn't want to play either. <laughs> you know, people talk about speeding up baseball. We're going to get a little insight into that here in just a second. All right, Francesco's ready to go. He's got that left for par. Ruff just turned that club over a little bit, as it tends to do. It's only been one bogey on the fourth so far today. Indeed, Brooks had to ask. Not sure what he was asking about. But whatever it was, he never touched the golf ball. The ball was sitting way down and something that he appeared to maybe look like a hole to him and always good to check. Just had to be a, a poor, poor lie there. Just could not judge it. So he will have to get that up and down for par. The leader by two experiencing the first bit of rough water here so far in his title defense as we are pleased to welcome you here to our broadcast position a seven time National League All Star but he is also the ambassador for the PGA Championship former Mets star David Wright David thanks for coming in thanks for having me good to see you Great to have How about here. Steve Scott have you I met know. him no first you, time you were looking for a golf lesson from yes. Michael Breed yesterday this <laughs> this guy right here can help get me uh, nice and uh, Toned up a little bit, huh? Yes. Always love baseball players and their athleticism. Okay. Or lack thereof. Come on. Yeah. Well, Brooks, a former baseball player, and he's going to have that now left for par. What do you think when you hear everybody talking about how Brooks is, you know, may not even be, this might not even be his favorite sport. He loved your sport the best. That was awesome yesterday. Yesterday, um, we went to uh, over to the range, and uh, Brooks was practicing his pitching and chipping. And uh, he came over and we talked shop for a little bit. He wanted to ask a bunch of baseball questions. I wanted to ask a bunch of golf questions. So we were just ping-ponging it off each other. So it was a pretty, pretty fun day. Well, we're right here in the middle of it. This is the group that everybody wants to watch. Have you been out there watching these guys? We walked with them for their, like, their first nine uh, today. We went uh, with Tiger and Brooks and, and Molinari. And what an unbelievable atmosphere. I mean, it was really special. Uh, I think I mentioned it. Uh, this is my my first major in person to be able to you know pair up with that group for my first nine was uh really really special this is for eagle here we go that's pretty special also eagle for tiger at four he's four under on his last four and leapfrogs to one under for the championship Maybe it was me. Maybe I was bad luck for him. Yes. <laughs> I thought you were going the other way with that. You sit down with us and look how things have gone. That was within arm's reach, the, fr the front nine, and uh, you know, now he's turning it on. Well, he has certainly turned the corner, David. Things have gotten better for Tiger Woods. Two doubles on the card, Steve, and now an eagle. He flips a switch better than anybody. I you mentioned it before, and it, it just... He just knows when to make it happen. Just like our, this man sandwiched in between us. Just <laughs> knows when to make it happen. Now Molinari for his five. This would be a scrappy trip down this fourth hole. How about that? He didn't hit the fairway. He didn't hit the green. He didn't even hit it close. Five anyway. Caught the lip of the fairway bunker, and that guy just doesn't quit. Had it not been for a pine cone, 
between he and the 15th green at Augusta National that might have gone differently. Kepka had a couple of good looks down the stretch of the Masters also. This for par. So he stays bogey free for the week and just continues to lead by two. Ho hum. David, is there a is there a baseball equivalent to a guy like Brooks Kepka, a guy that just keeps his head down, does his work, yet continues to excel? Yeah, we try to we call those grinders, and I think that's one of the biggest similarities between baseball and golf is you got to grind. Like even when you don't have it that day, baseball we play so many games. These guys play so many rounds of golf that you know you find a way to compete. You don't feel good. You find a way to to get it done, to put up a score in baseball, scratch out a hit, scratch out a walk. You know, do other things in your game that maybe just aren't, you know, working for you. Find another way to win the game. And I think that's one of the biggest similarities with these guys and what we did was, you know, being a grinder is probably the one of the best adjectives that can be used to describe you. There are tons of similarities, as you pointed out. And Tiger grinding right in front of us. He started the day with a double bogey, made another one at 17, and he's one under as he heads to the fifth. Great, great par four here. Tremendous strategy once again, just after number four. You gotta fit the ball down this right half of the fairway if you want a good look at this green. This green also sits elevated. You cannot see the putting surface from any part of the left half of the fairway. So a fairway is a must. You have to negotiate some of the oaks that sit on the hillside about 60 yards short of the green. A nice high fade to this back right hole location would be the perfect answer. You make it sound so easy. He well, makes it it, it kind of is. You just kind of hit the ball and you find it. And you hit it. <laughs> he makes it look pretty easy also. Third toughest hole in the golf course. Got to find the fairway. No problem for Tiger. Beautiful shape there. Some 290 yards to cover the expanse of that bunker. You talk about grinding. Every once in a while, there's something going on in the business also that grinds. This piece of tape is just getting on my nerves. <laughs> that was a loss for us. <laughs> nice recovery for Brooks. Recovery from just a par. At a par five. Molinari may have to take a little more conservative line left. Doesn't quite have the firepower off the tee. Averaging 289 for the year on tour. Well, and maybe too conservative. Good call. When we come back, David Wright's going to tell us what being the ambassador for the PGA Championship is all about and where that credential has gotten him so far this week. Kepka leads by two. It's, there's more similarities. Back with you here in the opening round of the PGA Championship. Seven-time National League All-Star, two-time Gold Glover, two Silver Sluggers for David Wright. He's with us here. And Tom says this should also be known as the David Wright Group. They love him in New York. Who do they love more, do we think? Phil here or long time, career-long New York met David Wright? That's an easy one, Phil. They love Phil. <laughs> Way more. <laughs> he never struck out. But he hasn't, uh, hasn't gotten the victory here in a major yet. He's been close. The wait at the fifth, and David, you're here not only because you're a lovable guy, but you're also the ambassador. Only the second year the PGA Championship has had a, an ambassador. But more so a lovable guy. Yeah, well, that, right. <laughs> right. We understand that. Okay. Uh, what, is, what has that been for you? We didn't even know what that is, so there's no wrong answer here. What's it been like <laughs> for you? It's been awesome. Um, you know, when they first approached me, um, you know, I was like, oh, great. I get to be a fan. I get to watch the greatest players in the world and hopefully pick up a couple things, maybe shake a couple hands, take a couple pictures. Um, but when I started getting the schedule and, and exactly the community outreach and what they do 
um, you know, for you know the metropolitan area here, the outreach programs, the you know, working with veterans, the working with children earlier in the week. That's the stuff that was really, really cool. And now I can kind of, you know, turn it on and become a fan and, and just go out there and enjoy the game of golf. But it was really nice to be a part, uh, to be able to give a little bit back to a community that gave me so much for the last 15 years. Well, there was no question you were noticed out there while you were out with these guys. New York fans, they're passionate. They're passionate. And, uh, you know, it was really cool. You know, really, really cool to... You know, see the passion they have for baseball and obviously how that translates into golf. Yeah. Francesco has laid up already. Could not make anything out of that left rough. And now Tiger from 193. So the red hot streak may cool off a little bit. You can see he's kind of barking at himself, but green regulation here doesn't kill you at five, Steve. It's mad because he probably had the perfect number in with the perfect shot and he just he just didn't pull it off. Sometimes you're in between clubs and you don't get too upset, but you know, from 193, a reasonable shot, but he had a green light situation in his mind there and he didn't pull it off. Here's Kepka from 174. Nearly 20 yards closer, so you see the difference in speed that Kepka has versus Tiger now. He is a career 312 hitter, can hit it to all parts of the ballpark, and has a little more speed on the base paths than you would expect. Looks Kepka, probably a three or four tool guy, David. Not just baseball, he could probably do it all. I mean, he looks like a terrific athlete, so. Uh, you know, he, he looks he looks the part for any sport. That's for sure. This before that a moment ago, Francesco had 199 and just said, I, I don't have it. And smart play. And that, by the way, David, that's a lesson to you, especially if you can play here. One of the best players in the world just decided to drop back and punt. So he'll try it from 100 yards even. Just see the top half of the flagstick from that lower location of the fairway. Always difficult to judge distance. He's done it pretty well there, though. All right, let's just say you get together and Michael Breed gives you the lesson. Former PGA National Teacher of the Year. You get your handicap done, you're going you're to be under 10 in no time. What's the, what's the, what are the bucket list courses for David Wright? <laughs> Well, I mean, the top two, I, I think, are probably everybody's top two. Pine Valley, Augusta. Um, you know, Pine Valley is close to Philadelphia. Are the Philadelphia uh, fans going to recognize you? They're not nearly you? as welcoming okay. as, as New York fans. <laughs> I was say. Um, I might have to go incognito there. Um, you know, those, that was one of our greater rivalries uh, throughout my 15-year career. But um, you know, I just love, I mean, at this point, for me, any course is, is just special to get out there. It's, it's almost, for me, it's so peaceful, and it's, it's I get to compete, but also it's, uh, you know, almost like a form of meditation where I can just relax, take a deep breath, soak in the scenery and also compete, which are my favorite things. All right. Augusta National, they have a minor league baseball team. How many years did you spend in the minors? You didn't spend, you were Three. number one draft pick, right? I was a compensation pick, so in between the first and the second round. Um, so it's I got the same drafted. Thing, yeah, it's Steve. the same thing. A little less money, but same thing. Yeah. Um, so I went to uh, spent three years in the minor leagues and um, almost three years to the day. Got called up, and when I was 21 years old, and uh, um, you know what a an amazing time. Sounds a little like Brooks Kepka, how he toiled overseas mm -hmm. for a few mm -hmm. years before starting to make his name. And how important were those three years for you in your development? The most important. Um, you know, you're talking about not just baseball, but time management, um, you know, dealing with, I know it's the minor leagues, but dealing with the media, um, you know, trying to figure out, because as, as an 18 year old, you know, you could go out and, you know, do some things that you probably shouldn't be doing and you weren't, wouldn't be ready to play the next day. So it teaches you how to become an adult fairly quickly. And, and, and those were instrumental for me in learning that baseball was my number one priority. I wanted to make it to the major leagues and I wanted to stay at the major leagues. So. You know, I had to do A, B, and C and keep my head on straight. And, uh, you know, so those three years were unbelievable for me. Tigers four back. 
He's four under on his last four. Pretty low percentage putt right here. Big swinger from left to right. You see him looking well out to the left. A lot of speed here. Ooh, and he wanted that one too. Try to just catapult him a little bit more. Well, you can take advantage of this New York crowd also. You know, not, not one you expect to pour in, but had that gone in, then you start to feel it around the black course. I think we saw that at Augusta National also. Francesco Molinari beat Tiger head to head at Carnoustie, but you've been there, Steve, and the, the, the gallery's not on top of you. The wind is blowing sideways through your head. There, there aren't really roars that resonate. At Augusta National, the ground shakes. And you can get a little bit like that around here, too. Kepka heard it, felt it, tells a funny story about this tournament back in August at Bell Reef. He kept hearing all the roars for Tiger. He kept his head up. This for birdie. And that's what he does. Rock solid. The pace of that stroke hasn't changed from the very first hole that he played today. In a little bit of trouble, back at the fourth. Squirrely third shot, got it up and down, made his par. And right back on the train here, six under, he leads by three. One thing I notice is that obviously he's not getting too excited <laughs> by his facial gestures, but just the way he kind of walks off, you know, you'd think kind of excited. I mean, you think, hey, I'm in the lead, like get a little adrenaline, like there's no adrenaline. Yeah. <laughs> it's not visible at least. It's like we're out here in a mini tour event, <laughs> six under, ho hum. Taking batting practice. Molinari for his par. Couldn't find the magic again. He scrambled his way to a five on the last hole. That's a that's a David Wright looking scorecard right there. There's a whole lot going on. <laughs> There's a lot more squares on my scorecard. Yeah, I would advise you to not keep score yet. <laughs> Then again, you know. too competitive. You have to keep score. Well, you can use different systems. I like that. I like that better. You can use the Dell Cochran system from Scottsdale. Either Y's or N's. Either yes, you finished the <laughs> hole, or no, you didn't. <laughs> you want more Y's than N's. Thank you. Thank you for the lesson. You're welcome. I don't teach, by the way. Steve Scott is a teacher. Tiger three putted. Earlier today, and he's just done it again. A miss from the same range that he missed at the very first hole of the day, Steve. His short range putting has let him down over the issue. One, one of his weakest stats. That's just a air right out of the balloon. Back to even par, but it feels worse than that. And we gave David Wright credit for the eagle at four, and we'll blame him and kick him out. <laughs> That's it. You're out of here. Well, thank you for the hospitality. That was a lot of fun. Duties for the rest of the week as the ambassador? What do you have to do? A lot of watching golf and, um, you know, hopefully just, uh, you know, whatever they ask me to do. Okay. You know, I do what I'm told. And you'll do it with a smile on your face. Thank you. It's been a fun week. So I appreciate you guys having me. And, uh, you know, what a pleasure talking a little golf and baseball. Likewise. Good luck with the game. That's the ambassador for the PGA Championship. Thanks, thank you, David. Major League star David Wright I'm right here with the Mets. All those years, his entire career, golf tracks showing us the sixth. A lot of options here on the sixth. Players can choose to play a long iron, leave it up on top, just short of that right fairway bunker that you see, or like a guy like Brooks Kepka can take his prodigious length and take it all the way down the fairway and have a little flip of a lob wedge into this front left hole location. This green is very flat, so hitting the fairway is very, very important here if you want to have a chance for birdie on number six. Nine birdies today, right in the middle as far as difficulty. It is fractionally over par. And Brooks is going to go the other way, Steve, here. He's going with the iron. Yeah, you, you do have some options here with this, how lush this rough is. He knows that every fairway he can hit, he's only going to have maybe an eight iron down the hill anyway, so. 
you know, this could be some four or five iron up that right side. He's leaning. Hmm. A little broken bat flare in the right. That's not what he was looking for. He would hit driver if he knew he was going to do that. Yeah. Closer is better. And here we go. Guys continuing to play in this direction. Almost dead downwind for Tiger. Trying to hold that face open. Doesn't quite put enough cut spin on that ball. Well, a little bit of a stutter step back there at five for Tiger, and he's going to be busy at six. The worst feelings in golf is to lay up poorly. If you're not going to take driver, you better get that ball in the fairway. It feels twice as bad when you fail to get the ball in play. Somewhere on the sidelines, the coach just spiked his visor. Francesco, no such problems. Oh, and very fortunate as that came through some sort of a depression. A little bit of mud on that ball also. It's getting a little tough here. All of a sudden, Things have tightened up a little bit, although Kepka leads by three. Brooks Kepka has made it look easy so far. A bogey free, six under start to his title defense. He's three clear. A tough t test of major championship golf. And Kepka just doing it his own way. Here's Molinari. That from 172. Shot plays downhill about half a club and he has judged it very well. In the four events with PGA Tour players that they've played here, if they'd have played them all at a par 70, Six under would have been the lowest winning score we've had. And Kepka's there through 14 holes. Uh, that is the end result of Brooks Kepka's shot from the right rough. Can't even see it there either, and I'm not sure this is going to be a whole lot different. Here's Tiger's second. Chances he's down in that fairway bunker. Yeah, good call. That's much better from then the rough. He was thanking his lucky stars he was there. Oh, he was trying to put some action on that and bring it back. Unfortunately, it stayed put. You know, we haven't seen his ball spin an awful lot today. And you mentioned it's about the spinniest golf ball out there. I've played it. I don't know if you've played it. I'm surprised it hasn't coming been coming back like it normally does. It's been Getting it close to the hole. Yeah. Doing just fine at even par. The Bleacher Report app connects you to the moments that matter faster. Follow your friends and give your take on highlights, scores, and more. Download the BR app today. Well, we'll be joining some of the TNT coverage here in a little while. Bleacher Report doing a special one hour pregame show. Leading up to the TNT coverage, which comes your way at 1 p.m. Eastern time. They'll have everybody on their show. We have just these three guys, but you know what? This week, this kind of seems like the tournament. Well, everybody the, wants to know how he was going to do. At the practice facility this morning, you know, there was 30, 35, 40 people out there hitting balls. <laughs> all the eyes were on Tiger. Everybody, all the media, <laughs> it's almost like we, we were not, you know, people there were just, they, they, they were just going through the motions. They weren't even existing. And, and you know, in a lot of respects, that's right, because Tiger's world, you know, is, is golf, and golf is Tiger. So 
he is the great curiosity and the race is back on. It's one of the great records in all of sports as we talked about earlier with Jack Nicholas whether it's 20 majors or 18 professional majors it's one of those benchmarks and it is game on again. I think we're seeing some of that just some of that that rust the inability to get out there and play in tournament competition has cost Tiger a few shots today no question. Yeah I think that's a great observation just the nine holes of practice and no golf between the Masters and here Kepka in another tough spot. Toughest test he'll have left of the day for par coming up. Certainly about the longest putt I can remember. I mean, every putt has been two foot tap in, really. So this game always tests you, no matter how great you're playing. There will always be a few opportunities within the course of a round that will challenge your focus and your and your just your ability to to block everything out and get the job done at that moment in time. All right. Tiger just got a little frisky with one of these back at five. That was definitely a tough putt and wound up three putting. How does this one compare to that? one? This one's got a little bit of speed to it. This sixth green is overall. It's about the flattest on the property sits in a little bit of a, a bowl area with the surrounding terrain, but it's very, very flat, and that's why you see Kepka's ball kind of run out. There's, it, there's not a whole lot of movement from back to front or front to back. It's almost a pancake, but if anything, this ball is going to come from his right a little bit. But certainly in the back of your mind, you know, hey, I just three putted. Flag stick in again. We've seen it a couple of times. Safety first. It will come back to the hole. Hank Haney always called him one of the best lag putters he's ever seen. And he just has a sense for the speed that's just a, an innate factor that he always has carried with him. The speed very well right there, but missed the line by a couple of feet. Came back left a little bit, but not a gimme. But certainly over the course of his career, he's he's two putted uh, <laughs> a lot of those when he had to. But Molinari here with a great opportunity for a three. His speed has been off all day. That's been the struggle for Francesco. Usually you figure when you're behind the hole that the green is going to pitch back to front as most greens usually do and. Just didn't quite sense. The amount of slope but. He doesn't get too up or down either so he'll be all right. Yeah, he's definitely struggling. You're just not going to see it on his face. Not sure we'll see much out of Kepka if this doesn't go in. Wonder what we'll see if it does. This to stay bogey free. Oh my goodness, he's just steely. He's a robot. How about this round from Brooks Kepka? He leads by two. And that's only because Luke List has gotten to four under. You say what you want about Brooks Kepka. If you don't think he's one of the best players in the world, you're not paying attention. I love the quote from Brooks that he said, tell me I can't do something and I can't wait to prove you wrong. And that is what it looks like he's doing out here. I mean, it's gotten a little silly with some of the things that have been said on television now. It's just gotten a little bit silly. I understand that some of that is for the job, but it's gotten a little bit out of control. And Brooks is answering with the golf clubs today. 
Francesco still trying to figure it out and, and Tiger can't take these for granted. He's missed a couple of these today. They've been a little bit longer than this. So a solid two putt par after missing the fairway at six. Tough finishing stretch coming up. Golf tracks taking us through the seventh, which when most folks play it, isn't a par four. Oh, they're giving giving the players a break today, moving it up from the 524 yard mark. It's only 495. It'll be able to maybe get around that corner and get to past the expanse of trees over on the right there. Very flat green here again. I mean, if there's a hole that's about 500 yards, that's a semi fair par four. I would say this is it, but you've got to pick your line and your distance off the tee. Center of the green, two putt, make your four. Go along your way. Only three birdies on this hole today. So another par four and a half on the scorecard here at number seven. Well, they're making a ton of fours. There's been a double. And you're right. It's interesting to see a par five, a converted par five moved up to mid range though. This isn't even long range. This is mid range today. But as we see our wind meter, it's going to play a little bit longer than the actual yardage. So those fairway bunkers in the distance become target bunkers. They're just over 300 yards and he's not aiming at them. He's trying to find a camera guy out there. with that Steve I think if Brooks Kepka built a golf course he would build a lot of holes like this and number five that left to right sweeping that would be the Brooks Kepka design that we might see in about 15 or 20 mm. years maybe do you think he would over punish the left <laughs> who knows Tigers doing some golf course design also and has always enjoyed the little bleeding fade. Tiger's designs are imminently fair. Have you played any of them? You know, I have not. I've seen pictures of many, many, many. And Blue Jack National yeah, comes to mind and his affinity for Augusta National. Very playable. He looks so friendly. Yeah, it's it's a, a beautiful designs, but and then he's you know he's got little par three courses they call the playground there, and he knows where golf is and the future of golf and making it fun. All right, it's not a medium length par four for Francesco. This one's all he wants. And very similar to number five, he's going to have to find a line a little bit more left than the. Fellow competitors he's playing with may have pulled this one through the fairway again and he has that's the exact same thing that happened at five. So Francesco struggling a little bit he's at one over Tigers back to even Kepka leading by two. He's dominating again. Brooks Kepka. Leading by two. And making it look easy, even when he was a little out of position on the last hole. Speaking of out of position, here's Molinari having to lay up again, Steve. Yeah, we're going to have to have a strokes gained laying up stat, I think, by the end of the day. But on these left to right holes, when you're a shorter hitter and you're trying to hit it hard, the tendency is to hit hooks. Your right side gets too involved, you close the club face. And we're seeing the ball go left. He's missed it left on all of these long holes. Guilty. The green is not clear and Tiger and Joey who don't talk a lot. About shots we will have some time to have a discussion about this one. Joe LaCava stayed on the bag during the layoff for Tiger Woods with all the surgeries. Now the green clear. 
was offered other work. Said he'd just be fine taking the time at home. And was willing to wait Tiger out, and that sure paid off. Tiger invited him to the White House for the Presidential Medal of Freedom ceremony recently. Yeah, he got a shout out. That was that that took the president off by by surprise. It's a fair way in a green. He knows he's got a few things to iron out before tomorrow's afternoon round, but he will have some time to do that and recoup. Kapka a couple of steps closer. Right in the center of the green. Ball comes down like a pitching wedge. Yeah, I mean, he's got the substitutes in. They're just running the ball right now, Steve. Just trying to get some freshmen some minutes. It's a little early for that. But Kepka checking all the boxes right now. All right, we talked about Tiger getting the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And he tweeted this. It's an incredible privilege to be awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom considering the recipient's history and what this means to me and my family. It's also very humbling. Thank you all for your support. And I hope this inspires others to never give up on their dreams. He had his mom there and Sam and Charlie and Joe. And a nice sunny day for it also. The, the list of, of honors that he has garnered here in his career is getting shorter, Steve. Of things he hasn't yeah. garnered. I don't believe he's got a <laughs> Grammy yet. No, no Oscars to speak of. <laughs> well, he should have won an Emmy for that, uh, that performance at the Masters because that was a tearjerker. Yes, it was. Even the re-air, remember everybody, we, we played early on Sunday. Everybody who maybe didn't get that message or tried to stay away. If you heard and you knew who won, you probably went and watched the re-air anyway. You cried again. You <laughs> cried again. <laughs> now Molinari with the layup. He left himself with an even 100 on the last hole, and he's at 101 now. Pretty good at laying up. guys knew coming into this week that getting out of position you were probably going to have a lot of shots of that length. We're seeing Francesco not blink when he's faced with that situation. Well what we're seeing here is really it's following this group right here is a microcosm of the whole total driving stat right you have Molinari he's ranked 63rd and he's the worst in this group and scoring the worst today and then you have Kepka who's tied for ninth in the total driving stat. And he is leading this group and the tournament. Yeah, it's looked easy for Brooks. It has not looked easy for Francesco. Well, Francesco is very tough mentally. He works with Dr. Dave Allred on his performance. You know, it's not necessarily a swing coach, but it's a performance coach. Allows him to... You know, just just teaches him how to be tougher in practice. You know, they call it, uh, you know, di they disrupt the normal flow of a like a block style practice where you just go up there and hit a bunch of seven irons. You know, they switch clubs, change targets, make your practice like you play a tournament, put some pressure into the situation and you tend to get a lot more out. And he's since he's been working with Dr. Allred, well, you've seen the results. He's done uh, remarkably, remarkably well. 
Yeah, we talked about the t the trophy that Francesco took from Tiger at the Open Championship by taking the lead from him and winning the Claret Jug, but he had also taken another trophy from Tiger just before that, winning Tiger's own golf tournament in Washington, D.C. by eight shots. Tiger didn't play. He handed him the trophy. Correct, correct. Look, that's got to give you a lot of confidence just in that when Tiger Woods hands you a trophy. So that's kind of started started Francesco's run. And Francesco also won this year. The Arnold Palmer Invitational down there at Bay Hill. You guys and your Silver Club Golfing Society showed up right after that. But Francesco was playing an hour or so in front of the leaders and just put a number up that nobody could touch. Shot 64 in that final round. And one, one thing that, that you have to take away from him is he is a closer. He closes the deal. When he gets in the hunt, he closes the deal, kind of like this guy right here. Yeah, that's, an, that's another place that Tiger has won <laughs> prolifically. From long range, this is the preferred method for Tiger. Leaves the flag stick in. It's not attended. Just get the speed right. Just falls slightly from his left to his right. A couple of these have gotten away today. Not this one. This one was too timid. And he's in that range again. They weren't all three putts. It was a pitch shot that left him about five feet at the 10th. And then it was a putter that got away from him at 17. And I'm not sure that was that may have actually been from the fringe. Don't know if that was officially a putt, but that definitely went well past. And then we just saw it happen at five. That was a three putt. This would be also. Meanwhile, at the top of the leaderboard, here's this guy, Ho-Hum, in another great spot. Mr. Cool himself. And that one fools all of them. Now Molinari, that career year last year, and changed just about all his clubs, including the putter. Very interesting and very rare. But he's had some continued success, so. <laughs> yeah, doing just fine, thanks. Another fist, uh, missed fairway is going to lead to another bogey for Francesco Molinari, and it's just a slow bleed right now for him. Made those three birdies at 14, 16, and 18. Was hanging in there, but this brute of a golf course is going to win out. But look, in the whole scheme of the golf tournament, though, in the championship, one under par is in the top 10. So he's only three shots out of the top 10, but he feels like he's miles back because he's playing with the guy who is just leapfrogging the field right now. So it's a kind of a false sense of not playing great. These guys are still <laughs> they're right there. Even par, even par is tied for 14th place. So, you know, we think, oh, Tiger's six back, but there's not that many people between he and Kepka. So Good to keep that into perspective as well. Yeah, that's a great point. Gives you an idea of what these guys might be feeling, and specifically our group. Now, they may not have the greatest sense of what's going on on the golf course. Very insulated here with a guy clear by two. This for par. Missed another one. They're missing left and right, but the five foot range has not been kind to Tiger. He's just not quite releasing the putter. He's missed a few, kind of leaving that putter blade a little open. Hitting these putts in tournament competition, just can't, I can't stress it enough. It's just, it's just different than doing it where he does back at the medalist. It was sloppy at 17 for that double, and this was sloppy at seven. Two pretty good shots 
and then three putts. And Kepka just doesn't back up. Hey, remember when you three putted at seven? Yeah, I didn't. As a matter of fact, I didn't make any bogeys today. Six under. Still leading by two. They'll head over to the par three eighth, which is that's one of the parts of the golf course you may not get to. So let's take a look at a hole that not too many folks are familiar with. This eighth hole plays downhill about 10 yards down the hill, 223 yards on the card, in fact, today. That oak tree sits about 50 feet high, and it, it will come into play with your visual, and if your shot comes out a little bit lower than you want, can definitely play a, a factor in at least your eye line to this back right hole location perched on the top terrace of this green. Par here, very, very good score. Don't see the players trying to get it all the way back to that top terrace today because if they miss, it's going to be a, a penalizing situation for them. So par here, excellent score. Go to the ninth, make your birdie there. You'll also notice the only pond on the entire property is right here on the eighth hole too so they don't have to paint many red lines or yellow lines around the penalty areas here so they save on the budget on that for yeah. sure fourth toughest hole on the golf course this par three eighth and a bit of a backup here and coming up in just moments we're going to be live on tnt Welcome back to Beth Page. This is feature group coverage of Tiger Woods, Brooks Kepka, and Francesco Molinari on PGA.com. I'm Brian Katrick along with PGA member Steve Scott. And we've gotten to the par three eighth with Kepka in full control of this golf tournament. And unfortunately, a couple of groups on the hole as we're getting bonus coverage of, of Hideki Matsuyama hitting a tee shot into the par three eighth. But Steve, we have been watching a clinic so far from Brooks Kepka, the defending champion who has avoided seemingly every bit of trouble here at Bethpage Black. He's made a, a gargantuan of a golf course look very easy. He, he demolishes it off the tee, has hit it in a lot of fairways, and he is on top. So he is uh, really dominating this field at this point, but it's exciting to see as well. And here's what it's looked like so far. Kepka. And this group starting over on the back nine. Tough opening stretch, having to start on the long par four tenth. Into the wind. He's over the back of the green. You're just looking to make a four, you're hoping. And then Kepka with a statement right from the get go. Hits the flag stick. He's one under through one. Doesn't matter. He's just <laughs> dead center perfect. Didn't make birdie at the par 5. 13th, which is a great opportunity when you're as long as Kepka is. But the very next hole, Ho-Hum will make this one instead. Two under through 14. Trying to chase down a couple guys that have started over on the front nine where it's a whole lot easier. Kepka with the tougher of the starts for sure. Par 4, 18th, positioned perfectly. Really a dream start for Brooks Kepka. He was able to take this shot in from 101 yards, put some action on it, bring it right back under the hole. Little Massé, absolutely perfect. And he would make it to turn at three under par, 32. Leading alone when he gets to the first, misses way right, very next hole, and then Houdini. This from just 88 yards, puts a little action on it from the thick rough there. Easy, darn near tap in birdie. Yeah, that almost looks unfair. He would make that to get to four under par. Short second, doesn't yield a, yield a birdie. Long third, after Tiger stuffed one in there at 235, Kepka had this for an answer. It was a punch-counterpunch situation. 
And Brooks punched back, and Tiger ended up missing just after him. Brooks extended his lead right there on number three. Out to five under par. At one point, he was three shots clear. Par five fourth, it's reachable. Kepka struggled, made a five. Comes to the fifth, which is a really tough hole. No problem. Another short iron in, another mid-range putt. One more birdie on the card for Brooks Kepka. He's six under, and at that point, he led by three. His pace of his walk has not changed from the start till now. Doesn't get too excited, and uh, I think we're seeing that paying dividends right now. And has been very patient, as you pointed out, and this is a situation we've seen this backup happen now four or five times throughout this round, and they're going to wait it out here, so our timing is perfect. <laughs> we're not going to get to see our featured group hit golf shots, at least here on the 8th. So we're going to be taking you back here to BR Report Vegas presented by Caesars. BR Rewards coming up next. And of course, the TNT coverage. We're going to continue here on PGA.com. They will play the eighth eventually, we promise. Steve Scott and I will have that TNT coverage coming up next. All right, that was. Well, Steve, that was a whole lot of fun. Unfortunately, we didn't get to show the TNT audience any golf shots, <laughs> at least live ones. Well, they, they saw a lot of the good stuff, so. Yeah, they got to see Kepka race out to six under. We'll see him on the eighth when we come back. Brooks Kepka leading the way at six under par. This 101st PGA Championship, we're at Beth Page State Park. We're in the black course. This is the tough one, the one with the warning sign. I'd like to welcome those of you watching now on DirecTV, as well as our audience that's been with us all morning long on PGA.com. TNT coverage underway also. And they have all the highlights and all of the groups. We have this featured group who's been waiting here on the 8th for just about 10 minutes. And what a tee shot to be sitting on here, Steve. 223. And the green's still not clear. Now, the good news is this does play downhill, but this portion of the golf course here, wind plays a little bit of havoc. Still, still into it. All right, the flag sticks in. Group heading up there, up that hill to the ninth tee. You can see it in the background. Wonderful spot on the golf course, although it's very remote. Way out here in a corner of the property. Pretty big target if you're not trying to get it back all the way to this whole location. But you got to settle for a 40 footer up a steep slope if you do. This is pretty good. Right at it and right into the slope. It's going to go back, get a little worse. But the line was good. Strong shot though with a win. Gusting up and the long wait that they had to actually hit that shot. A lot of time to think right there. And he was unfazed by the moment. All right, the 
third hole played a similar distance. Tiger and Brooks both hit laser beams in there. Brooks had that one online. We'll see if Tiger can answer this time. farther right. That's where you have to leave it though. That's the that's the mistake. If you're going to make a mistake. Short come up the hill. Hole is only five paces above. The edge of that slope today so. Pretty exacting shot with a large change in terrain and the uh, 223 yard distance. Could use something easy here. Doesn't usually come from outside 220. Into the slope and coming back down the hill, but a good shot. Wasn't a great shot. It was close to one. But for a guy that struggled with the speed all day, Steve. The tests just aren't ending for Francesco. And as a player being two over par with two to play, even par is that number you'd love to get back to. And this just isn't a great hole to think about getting one back. One of the last golf courses that A.W. Tilling has designed here in 1936, designed four of the five courses at the same time. Massive undertaking. The green course was actually part of an established other country club and the city acquired it. We wound up with a five course complex. The folks here on Long Island have claimed as their own. Coming up when these guys are done. Our other featured group including this man who's over on the practice area. This part of the yellow course by the way that's getting pummeled by the best players in the world right now. Luke Elvey and Michael Breed will be along to take you through featured group coverage in the afternoon. And we've heard a lot of support for Tiger obviously in this group. The leaders in this group but there's going to be a lot of vocal support for Phil Mickelson this afternoon here on PGA.com. And yeah, that should be a, a tremendous afternoon here as well. Always gets a little bit more interesting in the afternoon too. People are after lunch and had a drink. <laughs> a drink? A Coca-Cola or a Something. Yeah, just Thursday afternoon. Just wait till tomorrow. The scene will grow. Just trying to judge the lie here. Trying to figure out how is this ball going to come out of this first cut of rough. He's chosen a one of a lofted club, maybe a nine iron or a pitching wedge, just to bump it on the green and kind of back in the stance and roll it like a putt. Yeah, that's a good call. His two sand wedges, neither one of them have chrome on them. So this is something else. Very clever shot making coming up. We'll see how it works. Well, he got a lot of it. Maybe that was too clever. The tour players are 50 50 at seven feet and it seems like he's zero percent today from about that range. He's got another one. That's and that's a big putt if he wants any chance of shooting even part of day himself. With a birdie on nine so. He's just trying he's trying to get momentum. That's what this whole day is about knocking off some rust on the front nine building a little momentum trying to. 
get his, uh, and I'll use his term, feels back. All right, Francesco's feels have been off on the long ones. Let's see if he can get this one right. This is a much higher climb than what you'll actually see on the screen here. He's climbing up some three feet in elevation from that low area. Not a whole lot of putts like that on the practice screen. So you're only going to learn that by playing the golf course. And now Brooks to extend the lead. Steady though, nothing forced. That's that's what we've we've noticed all day. He just he hasn't forced the issue. He's let the round come to him and it just seemed easy. When you're trying to close a round like he has going right now, with a par here and a par on nine shooting 64. You know that as a player, and you know that that's, that's the start we're looking for, and certainly be a shame to slip one back after having such a, a great day. And Well, here we go with this range again. PGA Tour players have gotten better in the last year. They're actually 50-50 at eight feet. That's about what Tiger has here. Eight feet, ten inches, so it's closer to nine. Usually reads his own putts, doesn't usually call Joey in, but he's unsure about the quantity of this break. made any of them yet. What a day. Back and forth a couple of doubles. There was an eagle. And that one just got away from him here at eight. Well you look at those last three bogeys Steve. Pretty sloppy work by uh, the usually tidy Tiger Woods. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of a a kick in the teeth when you have that start you hit it on the front nine to get yourself back into it get yourself under par after I mean he's scratched and clawed from the outset with that double bogey on his very first hole number 10. Then to just throw them back is uh, is painful. Well, Francesco has had a lot of those today also after leaving them short he's up to the challenge there it's a nice two putt par. Tiger and Francesco could use somewhat of an adjustment on the stint meter. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I think if it gets a foot slower or if a foot faster, they just they haven't gotten this one dialed in today. Well, this guy's figured it out. Yeah, he's been everything he needs to be. The lead is three with one hole left. It is a clinic being put on by the defending champion. Oops. G -plot, Brooks. Coming up later this afternoon right here on PGA.com. We saw Phil Mickelson warming up on the range. Rory McIlroy in the group. And Jason Day, all three PGA champions. And all wondering what this afternoon has in store. It seems like they're getting the best weather of the week so far, Steve. 
They are. It's looking, uh, it's looking pretty solid now. The conditions have not really been a story today. It's, they've been a story all week long. It's been cold. It's been wet. But coming into today, we actually, a couple, actually had a couple of showers before Kepka's group got started, but nothing major. And it has not been a story since they put the ball in play. And these guys are going to get a wonderful walk this afternoon. Luke Elvey and Michael Breed will take you through it. Afternoon featured group coverage right here on PGA.com. One hole to go in our morning featured group, though. It's the par four ninth. 474 yards. This fairway has the most slope of any fairway on the entire golf course. Kicking down from the right. The players would love to get it up on that top terrace on the right. Gives you a clean look at the green. 286 yards to cover that left fairway bunker. So should be no issue for Brooks Kepka. Oh, but he's flared another one right. All right. Four. Well, he got away with it. Where did that come from? Did that? What did that hit? This hole goes the other way, Steve. Well, maybe he thought it was going to run through the fairway. I mean, he hits it so long. I mean, anytime he doesn't hit it where he wants to, it's <laughs> he might think that it's it's out of play, but. The wind uh, must have held that ball up a little bit. Right. Francesco's aiming right at it. Not often you get four right and a pretty vocal reaction. There was pointing and gesturing and mumbling. And the ball winds up in the fairway. It didn't look like it landed in the fairway either, but it's good now. And Francesco narrowly avoiding the old divot hole there. It's the last thing he needs. I think this is a big hole here for Tiger. He's not going to tee off for about 24 hours from now, so he needs a good visual, a good something to, to sleep on. He's got one more opportunity to do it. Pretty solid move right there. And that is about the most direct route you can take to the green. The finishing stretch here for our morning feature group when we come back on PGA.com. We're at the ninth, and Brooks Kepka, the leader of this golf tournament in dominating fashion. Leading by three. Group in front. Still waiting to clear the green and that's been the case. Pace of play was never swift this morning. This is the first time in over 30 years that players went off in 11 minute increments. The tee times, the extra hour of daylight now, they were able to do that. And we're very far east, but in this last nine holes, things have really slowed down a few times. Just teaches you to turn on and off your focus when you play golf. You know, these guys aren't locked in the whole entire time. I don't care if it's even a, a normal four hour round. You've got to be able to turn it on and turn it off. Time to zoom in on a target. And they're not too far from a woodpecker, apparently. Some of the numbers from Brooks today so far. We see the ball positions.
Kepka's driven it far enough where he's going to have a pretty good look at the green. Molinari and Woods are going to have a very some visual intimidation with that bunker flashed up right in front of their face. Green may be, and the flagstick may be completely obscured for them, so the benefit of hitting it up out to the right for Kepka. Even his bad shots turn pretty good. The players will dial it in with a hole location back left. I'd say one of the easier hole locations on the green. Land it middle of the green and, and give yourself a nice flat birdie putt. This is one of the flatter greens. You're not going to have to go up any large terraces like they did back on number eight. So and there's a great look from behind. Brooks Kepka going. Looking for his 14th green of the day. Not bad. I don't think you were aware. We can't see anything back here but good swing. Show that to you in a minute. Now Molinari. To pick the top of a tree up there. You can even see that tower. He'll be scrambling again. That portion of the fairway sits some 10 feet below where Brooks Kepka just played from. Making the decision making very awkward. his last best look right there gets it to bite and sit down the numbers for Tiger haven't been terrible 10 of 14 fairways only two of five scrambling here was the shot from Brooks I wouldn't expect him to have too many problems from here even though it's long range and just plays right into the stereotype. Kepka, 9 of 14 fairways. Now 14 of 18 greens. Only 24 putts today. He's made 88 feet of putts today, Steve. 4 of 4 scrambling, 88 feet of putts. There was a time, oh, a major ago, that we were told his hands were no good. His touch is no good. Hmm. Pretty sure at this point we can pretty much decide that everything's pretty good. We could throw that out of the window for sure. He he just continues to be rock solid. You know, and, and somebody like him, he's got he's always in the media, he's always in the limelight. He's somebody that people are looking towards to play great. And to be able to know that you're that guy is one thing, but to be able to get out there and actually do it and put a state this is a this is a statement early on that, hey, I'm playing with Tiger, and here's what I did. Look at me. Look at me, world. Yeah. I mean, this is the guy that you should be looking at, and we've been looking at it and him all morning long, the defending champion, winners of, winner of three of his last seven major championships played in contention at the ones he's not winning. It just blows my mind how... Uh, He's won more majors than actual tour events, three to two. It's, it's the level of focus, I guess, and the intensity that he brings that maybe those, just, those other events just don't seem as big or important in his mind. Can't imagine why he wouldn't be a favorite next year either. In 2020, the PGA Championship heads to Harding Park in San Francisco for the first time. May 11th through the 17th for official PGA ticket opportunities. Visit PGA Championship dot com slash 2020 might be a little brisk that week also now well, Francesco's in a tough spot here a lot of guesswork out of the rough 
That lie had to be sitting pretty well. Wonderful execution there. One more test for Francesco. He and Tiger both two over par. Both could have gotten much more out of their rounds. Francesco's day started with a wayward tee shot. Actually had to hit a provisional. Wound up just making bogey. All right, 88 feet of putts made. We told you that for for Kepka. That's that's a lot. Usually anything over 70 feet of putts made for a round is going to be pretty spectacular. He could tack on 33 more feet right here. This will put a little bit of an exclamation point on the day. Wouldn't put it past him. One more time. Brooks Kepka is doing his own thing. He's playing his own event, and he's doing it unlike anybody else. Seven under par, 63. The second lowest round in the history of major championship golf. Well, I'm not sure a lot of people saw that in the cards, maybe from Brooks Kepka, but that's, that's a score that may be unmatched the rest of the week. He was perfect. Just about perfect. <laughs> I guess he missed a few putts early on, but 63. I don't care if you're playing any golf course, 63 is fantastic number. Wow. The critics will find something. Tiger for a closing birdie. Got to hit it. That's been the story. For both Tiger and Francesco, the speed has been off. They've done enough right. But a very sloppy finish for Woods, who was back to even par for the tournament. He was one under through four, which was his 15th hole of the day. 13th hole of the day, however the math works on that, you get it. And then you see the three sloppy bogeys coming in. 72. Hard to sleep well when you finish a round like that, but he's going to have a lot of time to regroup, make a new game plan for tomorrow. He'll come out. It'll be a little bit warmer. He won't have to wake up so early and get the back warmed up at 4 in the morning. He can do it much later than that, but he's going to have to regroup a little bit. Been a pretty hard working Thursday for Molinari, also. Fitting that he would have to grind over one more and is able to talk that one in. 72 for Francesco, also. The thing that strikes me about Kepka is he just he makes that putt. There's no big fist pumps. It's just a little putter no. raise, a nod to the gallery like, yeah, it, I'm Brooks. And the crowd hardly got into it. You talk about the gallery, these, these great New York sports fans. That was a 63. Other than Brandon Grace, who shot 62 at the Open Championship, that was the benchmark. I think the galleries feed off the player in that yeah. respect, and maybe that's what we, we get from Brooks Kepka. Uh, you're right. And maybe why some of the big moments haven't felt as big, but this was gigantic. That's a four shot lead for the defending champion. Just a walk in the park. Got to oh. give him some love. Got to give him. We've got to continue to give him love. He is, uh, he is a stalwart in the major championship stage. What a statement in a featured group opening round as the defending champion. He held off Tiger in St. Louis in August. And he just stiff armed him and the rest of the field here today. Brooks Kepka has held a number of big trophies and he gave the field the Heisman. Seven under par, 63, leads by four over Tommy Fleetwood and Luke List. Tiger and Francesco can get themselves back together and they can regroup and they can make the weekend and everything else, but. The rest of the field has got their work cut out for them. When we come back, 
These guys will do their best to track down Brooks. He's hard to catch.